and with the kobolds. As we draw closer and closer to the thrilling conclusion. But who knows how long that will be, and if, if the kobolds can survive the horrors and magic of Yithrin. Last time, as you explored the lost city, you came across some curious uh, and lackadaisical gargoyles, uh, and in order to infiltrate their the spire of their master, which they had been ordered to guard, you disguised yourselves as a delivery company and managed to convince them to let you in, in which you had learned some pieces of information, some bits of lore about the city in its past. Namely, that in the past, the city used their own breed of mimics, about the size of a cow, they used in the construction of the city, that not only could impersonate objects, but also could simulate walls, floors, and ceilings as well, which instilled a bit of paranoia into some of you. Uh, you also learned uh, through the uh, th <clears throat> through Skinnuk's uh, learning, or not Skinnuk's, uh, through Scales, uh, that there was a theater, a grand theater in the city, far to the northeast. Uh, sorry, northwest of where you are right now. Our grand performance is set, was set to begin, perhaps not long before the crash of Yithrin. And with the information that you had gathered from there, and perhaps gaining some, some little bit of magic from that place as well, you departed. And on the way to the location that you had seen before, a grand sport-like stadium of some kind, you had encountered... A, a coffin-shaped building, which on the inside were construct-like humanoids with blue-tinned skin. And upon their demise, they turned into smoke and fire, and leaving their equipment behind. The entirety of that building was filled with alchemical, all sorts of alchemical contraptions and devices, uh, which you had gathered some that were left behind, but had, to, but had to leave in the building a force field which, had, which currently resided inside the corpse of a wizard, a book, and some other interesting-looking items, but you could not dispel the barrier, and so you left it behind with a mind to go back later. But eventually you came across the stadium itself, which... Upon accidentally activating the games as Hawks touched the trophy that was hovering on Odeus, you activated the game known as Chain Lightning, a supposedly popular sport among the Aetherian mages, where a team of, con of those same constructs apparated from thin air and challenged you to this game, to which iron balls appeared all throughout the arena, and, to, and you all gathered these balls up and attempted to hit the opposing team. It was, rough, it was a rough start at first because you all were not aware of the rules of this game. But upon observing what the other team was doing, you quickly managed to get the gist of it. And, despite everything, managed to pull through in the end. And won the beautiful, gem-laden trophy that is now yours. For the take, that you have taken into your uh, possession. And... With considering this was merely a scouting mission, a very profitable scouting mission, uh, you all decided to take a long rest, protected by the magic of the Liaman's tiny hut, to which you rested very peacefully, thankfully. Except for the fact that when you had awoken, some of you were feeling a bit under the weather. Thankfully, Meepo managed to cure what appeared to be a, a bad case of clammy skin uh, for both uh, for, for, most for Meepo themselves, as well as, I believe, Scales. Uh, Velin also seems to have contracted something similar, but she didn't seem to seek any sort of healing and seemed to be somewhat suddenly withdrawn. But with that, it was not the only thing that had happened during the night, because, um, something had happened to Hawks. 
a quite a, a quite a, a very large something actually, uh, namely his height, as he is now suddenly, I believe I believe, fourteen feet tall if I'm correct. Yes, fourteen actually close to closer to fifteen. Fourteen feet nine inches. Fourteen feet nine inches. You are now considered a large creature, and the rest of the party looks on in curiosity and perhaps horror. And that is where I leave it to you to determine your next course of action. Side note. Um, yes. Checking his actual height. Uh, I have in his bio page on Roll20, because uh, of the whole thing with uh, the, the, the Drist fanboyism, I have <laughs> written, I am a huge fan of Drist, but I capitalized huge, and it, it's hitting different now that the uh, height is changing. <laughs> 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 Mm. Ah yes, a, I'm a big fan. I'm your, so I'm many, your biggest fan. <laughs> There's so many layers to this. Uh, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> huh. Oh, that's interesting. Good. No, that's that's a great take. I like that. Oh my gosh! But as I've said before, uh, the time is now for you all. Decide your next course of action. So, what will you do, kobolds? Uh, so I've got the magic I need to get rid of that force field, I think. So we can go straight back there. And we could go check out the theater. And I sent a message to, to Morte, or to, uh, Rienach. Rienach, and she said Muerte's on her, her way, and then I sent a message to Muerte, and, uh, well, I told her to avoid fighting those, uh, large centipede things until we were with her. She was so disappointed. There's, so there's like a 50-50 chance she takes that as a challenge. Right. But I think she'll probably wait for us. But she'll be really mad if we don't go fight him on the way out. So, be ready for that. I was also trying to think of things I could do to be helpful in a fight against a dragon. But, I mean, aside from what I normally do new tactics and such but uh wasn't able to come up with much that's for much later though so i have time to think about that um hey, keeping us healed up is probably uh more than we could ask for right i was i was really hoping there was some way i could use like Eldeth's power to make a wall of water, but I guess the druids are the ones she entrusts to that, so. Okay, well. <clears throat> that being said, you said you could break down that, uh. Right. Yeah, that's good news. Uh, mm, mm. will kind of stretch, and you'll hear a, a kind of a crick in her back. Mm. Oh, rough night. Mm. I noticed uh, I woke up a bit early, and you were kind of sleeping on your book, so I put a blanket over you. Thank you. Um, thankfully, I've managed to mm, transcribe some... Very particularly useful spells, but I think which will benefit us in our exploration of the city. Okay. Are you trying to use that on her? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Good news. It will remove the, uh, it will remove the exhaustion. That's good news. However, it does not seem to remove that climbiness in her skin. Mm. 
I used um, remove curse on myself when that happened. Right? Y yes. Was it remove curse or was it greater restoration? It was remove curse. Remove curse. Okay, it did seem to work, yes. I believe you used it on yourself, and I believe it was scales as well. Right. Can I upcast it to more than one person? Or did I use it more than once? I I don't know if you can... Can you click the spell remove curse for me? Just so I can read it. I don't oh. I don't know if you can. I don't think you can upcast it, but it affects more people. Yeah, unfortunately you cannot you cannot uh, you can't upcast it, unfortunately. Okay. Then I will take another spell slot off because I only took off one for that. So it's off of scales in myself. And the What was the uh, curse for? It seemed that when you had woken up, your skin had a strange kind of grayish clamminess to it and it, you, you seemed personality wise both kind of both of you were a bit cranky when you woke up that's about it did i fail that saving throw i thought i passed it one of you failed it was either you or skinuck one of you there was another person that did fail we can go back up to the rolls and see what we can i, I know hawks failed so. initially but then used his indomitable to get through it like meepo and hawks failed and skinuck and scales passed let me yep. double check and then you rolled villain physically or something. Uh, you know what? I, in that case, I believe it was just... You know what? You're absolutely, you're absolutely right, Caleb. I don't know why. I think it was because so, I thought someone else had failed. But no, it was just the one And person. it was because no. Hawks failed and then unfailed. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, because I rolled high. So I, so I did not use that spell slot. Thank you, Caleb. I always appreciate your corrections. Because I, I, I hate being wrong when this situation come up. So I always appreciate that. Um, that's how I do. Yeah. Um, so in that case, put back I only correct when it's in, in favor of the DM and against us, and I don't know why that happens, because I never, like, notice it when it's on, in favor of me. <laughs> I, I'm kind of joking. I just go, oh man, thing. it must suck for me. <laughs> uh, but that, in that case, you only use the one spell slot then, so take that other one back. Hooray! I have an extra spell slot to use on things like actual usefulness. Yeah, and it's like, a third level like one magic. too. Always useful. <laughs> Anyway, onward to the, uh, what is it? Coffin? Alchemy lab? I don't know what that is. Do we have a name for it, Professor? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Get, water bottle. Get my water bottle. I don't believe we, uh, we had a specific name for it, but the coffin house works just fine. Fair enough. Onward to the coffin house. Onward. And so you go. Moving, 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 moving. Where did I put that, actually? Hang on. I don't know. Ah, there it, it is. Was in between... oh. Here it is. Aha. For purposes of this, here you all are. Sleepo would be up next to the magical thing. The turret would not be here at this point. And I will cast Dispel Magic on it. Um, okay. Are you casting well, it? Well, you think I should it cast it at the normal level or a little little stronger? Uh, that is... Uh, that's up to you, I suppose. I, could not, I couldn't guess what, le what level of magic created this, so it's up to you. What? I'm going to like turn. What level did you say? I'm looking at it. I'm deciding what spells I need and what spells I don't need and how precious spell slots are. While that's going on, can I do an insight check on Valen? Sure, go ahead. We'll be a pain. Um, five. I don't think I even have more than five yet. I'm just going to do it as its regular mm. spell slot. Hang on, one, one moment. I need to double check something. You beat her by one. She rolled a three plus one. Oh my. Yeah, she rolled very badly. Shame. There is a sudden, sh there is a shift in demeanor that has occurred very recently. She seems very withdrawn and her eyes kind of like occasionally dart amongst you 
uh, all of you occasionally, almost seemingly untrustworthy. There was, it's strange because there was, it seemed like she was warming up to you and now she has become more withdrawn. And it doesn't seem like there's a reason that you can tell discernibly at the moment. Thanks. Hey. Something to keep in mind, I suppose. Yeah, something to keep in mind. All right, so dispel magic. Would I notice that with my passive insight? Oh, what's your passive insight? Nineteen. <laughs> mm, usually, there's only passive perception for the most part. That's how I usually run it. But I'll say, I'll say you can roll your own insight check. Roll an insight, okay. 27. I would say you I would say you would notice this a bit after Skinnuck, but you would notice it as well. Hmm. In any case, though, you're casting Dispel Magic. What level are you casting it at? Second. Or third, I mean. Oh, so base level. Yeah, base level. Base level. Okay. Go ahead and roll for me an ability check, then. Arcana? Yeah, so let's see here. The DC, uh, let's see. It's, an, it's a specific ability check using your spell casting modifier. So make a wisdom check. Okay. Fourteen. 14. Okay. That was what you needed. <laughs> exactly, actually. All right. Well, death, help me. So. As you bring up your holy symbol. It's a tough one. It's a familiar sight to you. You hear a familiar sight and a familiar sound. As you hear a buoy, like a droplet hitting a pool. And you almost physically see an ethereal droplet of water splashing against the surface of the force field. And then the force field begins to ripple like that at the surface of a pond. And the ripples get stronger and stronger until the entirety of the force field begins to vanish, leaving the desk, the corpse, and everything on it right for the taking. Let the looting begin. Let the looting begin. So, go ahead and roll for me. And because I assume at this point everyone is piling in, or whoever wants to, uh... I will say, anyone who knows. Nobody's like trampling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course. Uh, anyone who wants to roll can roll investigation with advantage. I'm going to specifically uh, avoid the investigation to watch Villain and make sure she doesn't like pocket anything. Or uh, I will say she is going for uh, she is going towards the body. Yeah, uh, and she is. The first thing that she grabs is a book that was on the table. And she begins flipping through it. Um, seems to grab a couple of the notes as well. Mm. Uh, but for the rest of you, you, I'll say, you, Skinuck, you, you quickly, like, you, like, start, like, just start scrambling through uh, the drawers, just kind of opening and closing, looking for anything of value. You find a couple of things. You find... A vial of what appears to be of Quicksilver. I'll write that down. And it looks to be, it looks, it looks like it might be worth a lot of gold. Uh, you would also find, let's see here. What else would you find with this? You would also find Skinnuck. On the on the desk, between a couple of the books on the side, you find what appears to be a Chris an intric intricate crystal rod that looks that looks the detail on it is immaculate. Um, it's not any of any particular design of like to represent something, but just the patterns on it are just beautiful, like almost like. You would almost have to like inspect it like right up close to your face to see like the the minute details just all over it. It doesn't. You don't think it's magical per se, but it just maybe magic was used to make it, uh, with how the, how fine the details are at the very least. So, 
a crystal rod. I'll say worth a small fortune of gold. Small is fortune is a little bit more than a lot. I would say the crystal rod is definitely a lot uh, worth a lot more than the quicksilver, you would right. imagine. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take a moment to. I guess I probably should have cast uh, detect magic earlier. It's also the the trophy as well, which you got recently. Uh, I do some identifying. Uh, as for scales, so you scales, uh, you see. Uh, let me see here. What would you find? Let's. I, th I think for you in particular. I am going to search. Where are my tables? Where are my tables? Probably under your dice. Maybe. Hang on. Where where is my dungeon master's guide? Oh, it's all it's all the way on the opposite side of the room. Hang on. That's exactly where I put my stuff too, which is really inconvenient for both of us. Of course I don't it know is. Why I do that. Ah, here we go. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. ba. Alrighty, so go ahead and, and roll for me, Scales, a 1d100. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, in that case, Meepo, roll for me uh, a 1d4. And Hawks, roll a 1d6 for me. That was 44. I almost did the wrong thing. Ooh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay. Let's see here. I know I'm not having an actual effect on your search, but I'd like to think that my supervision is helping. <laughs> Indeed it might be. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where the heck? Where is my personal D100s? Because I'm going to roll this on my own. But as I comb through my bag of way too many dice, sure, I can find the tens of the D100, but I can't find the one. There it is. There it is. There we go. That's why you get, like, six different dice bags, each for different type of dice. And then you can get three, one, go, oh, I just need to roll one of these and one of these. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull up like a text document for this. No, you have to keep all of your dice in thematic sets of seven. <laughs> the 106 different ways to store your dice. All right, so this is going to take me just a little bit of time to, to, to roll these because you, uh, you, you got something good here. I just put one dice every three inches all the way across my room so that wherever I go, I'm always looking at a dice. But I don't know which one's where, so I just have to like randomly reach out until I find the right one. I feel like that's more harm than good if you've included D fours in that setup. Well, I'm not you talking can't. about the floor though. I'm just talking about like on like drawers. Like powers like methods. <laughs> okay. Because I... you can roll your ankle on. Besides, the floor is for laundry. I have just found something amazing that might not seem amazing to anybody else. I'm glad. What is it? It is 3D printable... Uh... Oh, oh, I see how it is. <laughs> it's just been your kick lately. <laughs> well, I got that 3D printer, and it's a beautiful yep. work of art, and it has been doing lots of cool stuff for me. And I but, have been um... enjoying your posts. I have not been able to find round bases for sale. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm talking about like non 3D printed. I've got a bucket here that's got bags of 25, uh, 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter, and uh, 50 millimeter bases that I've been using. But now that I'm actually doing like huge and gargantuan sized monsters, potentially, I need uh, 100 millimeter and 80 millimeter bases. And all the manufacturers who make them make them as like just acrylic cutouts rather than like the nice like I'm a big fan of the Warhammer style base where it's like a cup shape because the edge of the cup shape can then can like grip the terrain and stuff stuff can be propped up a little bit sideways on terrain in ways they can't if the whole base is a solid block and I just found uh, 3D print files for uh, a wide range of bases that includes 80 millimeter and 100 millimeter bases with slots for magnets wow. too, if you feel like magnetizing them. So I'm gonna load up a plate while we're playing. Of, I was uh, gifted a mini bases. that had a magnetized base. I, I think that's very interesting, but I don't know. Okay, let's see I don't know like where I would use it because I don't have any magnetized base like games that I play on. The uh, the a lot of people use it for transport, so that, like it's something that won't rattle around. You don't end up having to use that's like true. foam padding. Because it won't move from its spot if you get like a steel plate. Yep. Um, so people use that for transport. One of the big complaints I've had okay. or heard if from people who magnetize either miniatures or magnetize like terrain to be pieced together is that if you're using both magnetized terrain and magnetized miniatures, um, sometimes you end up with uh, terrain help. deciding it wants to go away from or towards a character, and that's not fun. But it repels the character off of it. The character is now levitating. I cast levitate on myself. <laughs> Suddenly. But uh, at least in terms of like models and transport, it's actually a very useful thing to do. Yeah. Okay. I have rolled. Er, I've rolled everything now. Okay. Good. So so what you rolled there uh, was essentially what scales rolled was. Uh, on the treasure hoard, because you guys are level like what, twelve now? Level eleven, something like that. 11. eleven. I think you guys are level eleven. Uh, so pitch at the end, the edge of that. So basically, you get I got you to roll three times a magic table A and six times a magic table B. Uh, so you got some interesting selections here. Ooh, nice. Uh, so scales. You're basically, there is a little safe that is left unlocked underneath. Uh, and you're kind of combing through parts of the outside of the desk as well. Uh, folded very neatly in one of the drawers, uh, you see what appears to be a cloak of some kind. Uh, it is it's kind of like gray, bluish gray, and it's very smooth and leathery. Um, not quite slimy to the touch, but it feels damp. Um, and as you kind of like pull it out and unfold it, it almost looks like uh, the hood is styled to be like that of a manta ray. Um, so it, it's inter it looks interesting. So I'll write that down. Cloak that is designed to resemble a manta ray. I also find... Uh, on the desk, uh, something that Velin did not grab, uh, you find two spell scrolls. Uh, one appears to be a spell scroll of Ice Knife, and one appears to be a spell scroll of Prestidigitation. One each. Uh, you it's find that spell that lets you make stuff smell good or like taste better or stuff, right? Uh, yes, yes, I believe so. A villain is just kind of like flipping through the book that she had uh, she had taken. Uh, you also find uh, find interestingly enough for Skunk, you find for him scales two crossbow bolts, but they appear to have a, a very fine design to them. In fact, I would almost say they were a uh, <coughs> plus one. Ah. Not that there's any way to physically uh, describe that in a way, but they are very fine, naturally, naturally nicely made. 
They're extra. They're extra. I really wish there was a better way to describe a plus one item in that sense. Um, I will say, compared to everything else that you have found, there are there is no sense of deterioration, no sense of uh, breaking. Uh, they are they are perfect in every way. Spinning rims? No, they're not fidget spinners. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also find they have like um, the heads are like twisted so that they're like corkscrews oh, or rifled. Two potions of greater healing. Nice. And I need to double check this one in particular because this, this was one of the higher rolls that I did. You find what appears to be a gem. A gem, let's see, what did I roll for that? I rolled a four. It appears to be a red corundum gem. There is a swirling mode of fire that seems to be burning slightly on the inside. It's not ominous at all. And that is what you have found. Melin seems to have taken a couple of these scrolls and books that are on the desk. The body of the wizard is also somewhat intact, which just appears to be playing, uh, wearing plain robes. But she will kind of look, look, look towards the body and she will say, Ah, finally, something that I can use. And she will begin casting a spell. Before you start that, can, can I cast a, something on you? It's going to help you feel a little better. I prefer if you didn't. I'm a little busy at the moment. I do it anyway. <laughs> Don't you respect personal boundaries? Um, I'm sorry. I, I I must be a bit cranky. Um, I, I think we were all cursed. I, hmm, you'll see her face kind of like droops for a small second. She gets very apologetic. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Um. Right, I had the same thing happen to me this morning, and I, I took care of it. I felt it going on in me, and I, I sort of just took time to make sure you were okay, and didn't seem like you were, so I thought maybe I'd try that on you. I... thank you. I think that something in this city's causing it. I, it might be. Don't know how to protect from that overnight. I don't, I don't believe I know either. Perhaps it might be a leftover of whatever catastrophe affected the city. Some residual magical energy, perhaps? Maybe our original plan of sleeping outside the city was smart. Perhaps, but it, it would take time to get back and out of the city. We don't even know how, how well, far Well, right the now we're lasts. near the entrance, so... We are near the entrance, but... Hmm. We'll have I to think of it. We had a quicker means of transport. True, it would be nicer to... Not to be walking on foot, but mm, we'll have to make. How fast can you go, Hawks? <laughs> uh, about the same speed I always could, just with bigger steps. Well, that's annoying. Bigger, Seems slower like steps. The longer legs would make you get get there faster. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit much to get used to the added uh, extra mass, Hawks. Like you're you're big, and you know there's you're you're stronger. It's it does feel like it's a bit much to carry around the new weight though. You don't know how if that'll change with time or if that's just kind of how how you are. Anyway, what'd you get there? The scrolls. Oh, just um, just some spell scrolls. Thankfully, I, I might add them to my repertoire later. Nothing too fancy. Um, although this one, I don't believe I've ever seen magic like this before. It, this this spell scroll seems to be unfinished. It it seems to be a spell scroll to create something called a magen. I... Hmm. I, a mage what? The, the, it's, in, it's in Loros. It's... Uh, Let me read it then. Well, it, it's, it's arcane sigils, but you... 
you might be able to translate it. It's here. It's, it's, it's this word right here. And she'll kind of turn it around and she, she'll kind of like lift the scroll up towards you. And you kind of have to lean down and squint your eyes to look down at this tiny piece of paper compared to your large size now. Um, the word majin doesn't seem to be translated into anything per se. It just seems to be a descriptor. Like, but like a, it seems to be a name of something. Like how you would call like a, you know, a chimera, chimera. A dragon, right. a dragon. Sometimes different languages might mean different things, perhaps, but this seems to be a specific name of something. Perhaps yeah, that's the right word. It doesn't translate to anything. Hmm. It's, yeah, it seems to be... Well, let me double-check uh, the magic uh, here in this particular situation. Well, if you can figure out what the process is, maybe we could figure out what the result will be. Well, it's, it's a very advanced form of magic. It's far beyond what I can cast, but it's definitely a very powerful form of transmutation. What's interesting here is that it's not... It seems like, from the journal of this gentleman, it seems to be... Um... Oh, this is funny. Do you remember those gargoyles that we found earlier? Uh-huh. I think this might actually be their master. There's references to some good-for-nothing gargoyles who spend their days lazing about asking stupid questions. Uh, hmm. Sounds like them, yes. So if we return his body, do they get free? Maybe. That'd be interesting. Maybe they could go home. Well, Hawk consider, adds consider wizard's you... body to his inventory. <laughs> Right. Hawks just picks it up. Oh, I was going to... Mm. Oh, what? okay. Well, maybe maybe if you tell it to talk to them. Well, what? I don't know. I don't know how that'll work. Well, you my... speak with Ed on it when we get there. Right, but doesn't that usually that's... only you can talk to it, though? Right, but I could ask it questions and it could answer. That's true, it could. Hey, I don't mean to break the flow of the story, but my dog is really bugging me to go out. So give me a couple seconds, and I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, I didn't know you had dog scales. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead and take care of that. It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, speak with dead can be cast on undead, can't it? That is an excellent question. Uh... I, the DM, says. Uh, yeah, please. Putting up the spell. Uh, uh, a corpse. Uh, and and can't be undead is a stipulation. Oh, it says that? Okay. Yep. Well, why don't why don't we take the body over there? Do speak with dead if necessary. And if not necessary, then you can just cast the spell to raise it. If it is necessary, then I can... D do the spell, you can do your spell, and then we can both get what we want. Yes, I I'm sorely lacking in co <clears throat> uh, undead minions, uh, which I use, by the way, to escort your friends to that place. Um, so if you were, I could use some extra assistance. Right, like. I'm not, I'm not going to stop you from using the corpse. I, I just think maybe we could get, get those gargoyles some uh, time off. Right, and she just kind of like looks at Hawks, which is who is now holding uh, the body. <laughs> oh well, uh, well, I've, hold on to it for now. I, I, I just hold on to it. And and once w once we've done that, while we're doing that, uh, whoever has magic to be able to tell what what all this goodies we've been getting is can use that at the same time. We can. Might as well do stuff that's in this area while we know where it is. Yes. Uh, let's see, upon... I'm still reading a bit into, into this book, but it does appear that there is an alternate way that this magic can be utilized. It's a much more expensive method, but it appears our previous thoughts were semi-correct. The body... That individual over there, apparently he used to be an, uh, an elven man, who apparently this this individual wizard found uh, found them very aesthetic. Apparently he was the servant of another mage, and he stole that servant, and, well, 
He wanted more of them, so he created artificial versions of this servant. So the blue guys are fake elves. They're not quite elves, but they are, they are, from what I'm reading here, they are artificial, they're artificial life. They can follow. So they're the Majin. They are the Majin, from what I can tell. Huh. Considering how many of them we played sports against, it seems like this was not an uncommon practice here. And you said it was transmutation and not not necromancy? No, transmutation. These are whatever method is used to create them. From what I'm looking at, she kind of like looks, scans the room, seeing all the spilled alchemical vials. I believe this might be purely alchemical. Given If they don't have wills of their own, there's no spark of life. They're probably no different than a golem or a, a zombie, just a, a different method of creation. They seem to be able to understand languages from what I'm reading here, and they could apparently speak telepathically, but they didn't have a spark. It's the, it's the sense of self from what I'm reading here. Ah, not enough fire, then. And not, yeah, not, not enough fire, as it were. Also, welcome back. Interesting. I don't know if we could possibly recreate one alchemically, but it is something to keep in mind. There might, if we might find more alchemical... Alchemical supplies. That mercury that you picked up before, Scales, might come in handy. As is the Quicksilver... And the crystal rod that you found, actually. Those are all components that I saw listed in the spell. Ooh, apparently those are actually worth a decent amount. Oh my. Hmm. Don't break those. That vial itself is worth 500 gold pieces around that time. Just for however ancient gold is with uh, for inflation. Um... And that crystal rod is worth about 2500 Oh. And I think the place, the value of where we found it and everything might influence it too, wouldn't it? Well, in terms of just spell components, uh, no. But in terms of you were going to sell it elsewhere, perhaps. Are there any, like, museums in, like, Waterdeep or something that are, like, looking for stuff like that? Almost assuredly, I would assume. Of course, in, back where I come from, the, uh, the Arcane Brotherhood of Luskin, well, there is a reason this expedition was um, uh, commissioned in the first place. Wait, who commissioned it? The, the Arcane Brotherhood. The... Just just the organization itself? Not yes. some specific person from the organization? Yes, that's the whole point of our organization. The acquisition and, and acquiring of knowledge of magical artifacts of ancient histories to learn and gain in power. Mostly for academical purposes, but we can act as individuals if we share our knowledge with the, with the organization. But otherwise we are left to our own, mostly left to our own devices, should we wish to be. But our particular group was commissioned by the organization for this specific purpose, which is unfortunate that we disbanded as we did but it can't be helped aren't aren't all the other members of aren't all the other members other than you either dead or heads of cults now yes two are dead and avarice is most likely on our tail and has a cult and a cult this shouldn't probably gloss over that uh, a cult yes you know I think I might have actually dodged a bullet. Oh, that's huh. right. You, you, that's right. You had auditioned to be a part of our organization for. I remember now. What was it that you had uh, that you had brought before us again? Was that the, was that the exploding, exploding wand? No, no, no. It was the 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 palisade, uh, the, uh, the instant instant cover. Yes. Yes. And it also exploded. It also exploded. <laughs> but 
I maintain that there was sabotage involved. Well, honestly, looking back on it now, I wouldn't doubt that. But it is a shame. We could have used an intelligent mind like you. It's a shame that you got passed over. Well, I'm glad you're with us. I... And she pauses. I am as well. Again, I... Thank you for... Saving me for whatever effect that was. It clearly was affecting our minds in some way. I shuddered to think of what would happen if we had allowed it to reach its conclusion, whatever effect that might be. I Did it I'm... have, like, a time limit? Were you... Do you think it was getting worse? Uh, over time, it could have gotten worse, but I didn't... In my mind, I felt like I... I couldn't trust any of you. I had... Huh. I felt... I just felt cranky when I woke up this morning and I didn't feel like that was myself, so I kind of just thought about it and decided to check if that was what was doing it. Right. Which, if any of us falls victim to it, we at least know the first symptom, the clammy skin. We should try and alleviate any of those symptoms as quick as we can, if we find them. That does mean we might be fewer on resources, but it might be a worthwhile investment to prevent whatever happens as a result of it. I think we're all in agreement there. I mean, I don't mean to presume, I just, I assume that would be the right course. Right, I don't want us to not trust each other. Trust is the foundation of peace. Right. I'm pretty sure that's in some of the sayings of Eldath somewhere. I wouldn't doubt it. But in any case, I think we found all we came to here, and so we found quite a bit. With that in mind, though... Should we head back to those gargoyles, or should we explore other parts of the city? I'll leave that decision up to you. Well, if we can go back to those gargoyles, it's somewhere nearby that we can go to, and we can uh, deal with the body here, and then you can get your body sooner. And meanwhile, while we're doing that, uh, Scales or Skanuck or whoever has the ability can check out these items that we've got and see if there's anything worth using. Fair enough. Indeed, you did, you did get that trophy, which, if I'm being honest, I did cast a detect magic spell earlier. It was supremely magical. I like the word supremely. Well, in truth, yep, I'm, yep, I'm perhaps yep, exaggerating. Yep, yep. I'm perhaps exaggerating a little bit, but it was it was distinctly magical. Mm -hmm. well, gonna have to, I have a lot of identifiers to cast. Thankfully, through a troll. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll be I'll be casting speak with dead, which takes time, and then she'll be casting the. Spell to raise the zombie, which also takes time. Mm -hmm. It'll have to happen after I've done speak with dead, so it'll give you time to do at least maybe two or three. Could she raise the zombie right now? Since it's uh. Well, we already okay. decided that speak with dead can't be done on an undead, so I have to do speak with dead with it before, and we're bringing it over to the gargoyles to see if it'll like let us release the gargoyles. No, I mean like, is it night? Oh, right. Uh, that's a different spell, isn't it? What what spell is she using? Specifically animate dead, not not create undead. Oh, okay. Although I do have to... I, let me double check that. Because uh, one of them requires night, the other one doesn't. Okay, it's create undead, the sixth level one, that requires it to be nighttime. Animate dead does not have such a restriction. Mm -hmm. And animate dead is the one that's boosted by being a necromancer, so... Indeed, although she uses a NPC stat block, not particularly the... Um... Right, I know. But... Okay. So in any case, you guys are going back towards the uh, the spire. To the, to the gar gargoyles, yes. The gargoyle. Alright, so let me move your guys' token over to the map for that direction. Let's see, about 30 years on this. Okay, time-wise, okay, that makes sense. Just counting time. All right, so you find yourselves uh, back at it again. At the spire. You see the two gargoyles uh, currently are rummaging around. Oh dear, oh, oh dear, I can't believe oh, those kobolds. Oh, are you sure it was them? No, it couldn't have been them. They were so nice. Uh, the place is wrecked. The master's just going to be absolutely furious when he finds out. Uh, what are we going to do? I don't know. This is your fault, though. How is it my fault? 
Well, I don't know. You let them in. Well, you let them in too, you idiot. Hey, don't call me an idiot. You're the idiot here. And why am I the idiot? Well, I already said. Right, all right. Let's not fight. We're fighting right now. No, I, I think it's you guys can talk this out in a civil way, but also let's let's talk it out ourselves. Since so, uh, sorry, uh, see, we came back. See, I don't know if we can do that. I mean, you guys. I mean, what do, what do, I mean, look. Be, okay, be honest with us here. Did you come in and did you break the? Can I be used on humanoids? Did you come in and break the uh, furniture? Well, I didn't do anything in there. I didn't go in. But, uh, Hawks, do you have that, uh, the thing we found? Uh, yeah, he's, he's right here. So Hawks will saunter over bigly and place the body on the ground. Be like, I, uh, I'm sorry to bring you some, uh, some bad news, but we think we, uh, found your boss. Uh, uh... Go ahead, Caleb. Never mind, it was me. Corpse delivery is extra. <laughs> There's a moment of silence. <laughs> and then the gargoyles just start... <laughs> We're free. Oh, uh, can you believe it? This guy... How long has this guy been dead for? Oh, man. Oh, man. Don't we... Doesn't that just feel embarrassing? How, how long have we been waiting for just this dead guy to come back? Oh man, that's that's that's, that's embarrassing. All right, we're we're gonna we're gonna go. Just, just goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. I hope, right. have, I hope you have a nice life where, wherever you're heading, whether that's you know the hells or somewhere else. You know, good, good luck to you. Uh, well, that's peace with you. Sure, whatever. Goodbye. <laughs> and they're and they're off. And they what? leave. They, 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 they just leave. <laughs> You reckon we could have, like, gotten any old set of robes and, like, a, any old body? I don't just... know. I think they'd recognize them. Ah, fair enough. But anyway, uh, Valin, your body. <clears throat> Janet claps, claps her hands. <laughs> let's, let's bring it inside. Oh. And then we can do a little ra wrestling around in here, too, for stuff we missed. Alright, let me work my magic. And she'll kind of like rub her hands. Watch out for mimics. She kind of <laughs> looks around paranoid. So this token won't accurately represent um, the, the wizard in question, but it's a standard uh, skeletal token as she will begin to cast a spell and the body will kind of twitch. And it will take a, a little bit of time to do so, but the body is starting to animate Slowly, as she is in the process of casting the spell. I'm going to ritual cast purify water, or no, uh, not purify water. Uh, ceremony in order to get a vial of uh, holy water. All right. As you try and go up the stair scales, uh, you come come across. Um, there is a door that kind of leads to the upper area, and you kind of like kind of tilt it open. But she kind of breaks off its hinges and kind of like reveals to you uh, that there is a room quite much like the like the one that you had just came from but it is empty as there is empty save for the fact that there is a caved in ceiling uh, preventing access to the rest of the whatever this spire used to be unfortunately. So there's not a not an opening up there. Doesn't seem to be no. It seems like whatever crash had occurred with the city uh, has prevented any sort of access up there, as it is caved in on the inside. Presumably, there were perhaps multiple floors, and all the floors just crashed down uh, onto that floor. Unfortunate. You sit down on the on the broken chair, the broken couch scales, and it kind of poof, deflates slightly. As you kind of look around the room, though, it does seem there's not a whole lot else to be found here. It seems like you pretty much combed 
uh, anything of use from this area. But in the meantime, I believe, Skinuck, you wanted to do some ritual casting of uh, some identifies. Yes. So what would you, well, like, to what would you like to cast it on? Um, I feel like first off, I feel like first, what do we have that's magical? Yeah, let's start with the trophy. Let's start with the trophy. I know that's magical. Now we'll, uh, I can go through the list of what else we got. All right. So. First off, you've got the trophy, so it should be under magical items. Uh, okay. In the journal, it is the trophy of good luck. While it's it is it requires attunement, while this magnificent trophy is on your person, you gain a plus one bonus to ability checks and all saving throws. Oh, that. So it's like a stone of good luck. But Essentially, yes. Yeah. But. But shinier. It's shiny. It's very pretty looking. You can make a turd of good luck and it can be super shiny. <laughs> Rude. It's very lightweight though. You kind of carry You can just kind of carry it like in one hand. It seems to kind of have like a little... It kind of like hovers in place. Like you can just kind of, kind of set in the air and hovers there. Hey. Wow. That is... Very tempting. What is everyone else looking at, like, for magical objects? Magical items. I'm fine as I am, she says as she completes the incantation, and you'll watch as the mage's body, the skeleton, uh, will rise with its covered, with its um, dust-covered robe. It will just kind of, just kind of clack its bones and its cricket's neck looking in your direction. I've got this, uh, this, uh, cloak thing here. Alright, would you like to cast Identify on that as well, for the cloak? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I was asking, like, like, in terms of, uh, distributing stuff, but I guess we should probably lay out what we got first. How long does Identify take to cast his ritual? Probably ten minutes, I think. Okay. Ten minutes, yeah. So every, every I'm taking an hour to do basically. the ceremony spell on this vial of water. And I don't know how long Villain takes to re revive the body. Uh, so it only takes her one minute to animate it. Okay. So she's done before. You're even done with your first identify. And you're done with your first identify before I'm done with my ceremony. Yeah, I can get five or six of those off. Mm -hmm. let's, let's make a production line of this. <laughs> so while you guys are doing that, let me do something of my own here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Never, it's never, never feels good when the DM is kind of like humming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. And there's a D hundred roll on the side. Mm -hmm. oh God. I just oh, uh, no. don't, don't don't pay attention to that. It's fine. It's fine. I am paying clear attention to this fifty six that you've rolled. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> Well, uh, continue. Uh, so you you are identifying, are you just laying out the items, or are you going to identify the cloak next, you said? Yep, anything anything magical we don't know the purpose of yet, I so... Have, I'm going to flavor the ceremony that I do to make this holy water. Okay, I'm how would you like to, to flavor? Pour, pour the water into, like, a bowl, and I'm just going to silently sit there for an hour. Okay. Not a word, not a movement. The water is perfectly still. Ooh. That's very fancy. Mm. Yeah, even with all your kind of, the rest of the, the parties clamming around, the bowl will not move once. The water will even, remain still. Even like if the, there's like a tremble of the earth or anything like that, the water doesn't move. Especially if like it's hawks like running around too. Yeah. Also, hawks for, also. step next to me. Oh, sorry, Meepo. Oh, wait. Hox's Didn't token here is not uh, large. I should change that to reflect what should be the truth oh. in the situation. The ever increasing. The ever bigger. Which reminds me, um, because time is being taken for all of this. Uh, well, that's right. He was growing like a foot an hour, wasn't he? 
Uh huh. I just need to double check because there's, there's very there's very specific wording to the changes that he maintains when he gains in size. Uh, let's see. And given the time taken to get back, it hasn't been two hours yet. Not yet. No, no. It's been like an hour and thirty minutes. At the time taken for rituals. Okay, you can. Okay, you gain one more foot, Hawks. So you're fifteen foot nine. Yes. I accept this change. Leafly. You need to <laughs> measure that out and see how tall that is. <laughs> I don't think I have a measuring tape. I should I should keep, have to keep that spot bookmarked because that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna be coming back to that in case I forget. Um. Hmm. So I will say, uh, if you got the cloak, you would know it is a cloak of the manta ray. Uh, while wearing Ooh. this cloak with its hood up, you can breathe underwater and you have a swimming speed of 60 feet. Pulling the hood up or down requires an action. So it may not be particularly viable for your current situation, but uh, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of selling some stuff on the side. And no, breathing underwater is always useful. It is always useful. And the important thing is that, uh, let me see here, it, uh, this particular item does not require a tomb. So you can just kind of like wear it when it... Oh, sure. Right, because always put it on the back to the giant, thing. to the uh, <laughs> giant area. Yeah. An important thing to note, Hawks. I I hadn't quite mentioned this before, but the gear that you're currently wearing, like everything, like all your weapons, they are increasing with size to match with you. So all your weapons, all your, all of your current equipment is matching in size with you. As you grow. If he tries to put on, like, a normal sized piece of equipment, does it, does it work? Uh, is he going to attempt it? Like, if he just, like, you just grab something else, like something that someone else had? Yeah, you got, like, here, a knife a or something you can hold me? Let's see here. All right, you grab a knife, the knife does not increase to your size, to match with you. Okay. Nope. Okay. Oh. What well, looks like this stuff is. Wait. Does that mean all my rations are supersized now? They Let me are. check my bag. Oh my goodness. The food for days. They're well, maybe not for. They're hawks. <laughs> they're big boy hawks sized. They're family sized rations. <laughs> they're cobalt crew sized. Excellent. Excellent. So, as your ceremony concludes, Mupo, you gain. Whatever you had set up to do, which was, I believe, it was uh, was it was it the holy water or what had you just uh, holy water? Yeah, holy water. Okay. Because I didn't have any vials left, and we had decided that there was a lich, and I didn't want to deal with the lich without holy water. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Hawks and Skinuck. I need both of you to make perception checks for me. Okay. 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 That would be natural, Monty. Indeed, it is. So, Hawks, you're so, you're kind of like you're kind of distracted at the moment by like trying to like see like if the knife, you know, if it does match in size, if you're not. It doesn't seem to. Um, but, Skanak, you're kind of like... You're keeping an eye out, trying to make sure like nothing kind of sneaks up on you. And you you notice that there's a strange bluish glow uh, coming from up beneath the spire, uh, down like kind of like these directions. And you're not sure what it is at first, until you find, as you look over the side... You see these strange ethereal spectral hands that seem to be made of some sort of magical arcane force that are f starting to float up in your general direction. 
and just seemingly clenching and unclenching the single spectral hand that they represent and just kind of are floating up towards you menacingly. And I would like everyone to roll initiative. Oh. Is this interrupting my in uh ritual? No, it is at the very end of your ceremony. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Oh! Hang on, I think I'm in good. I don't think I... Hang on. I think I need to... A... Oh, let me click my token. I might need to change everyone. I did not click my token, so you'll need to write me in. That's okay. I also have not cast my daily spell on myself yet because I neglected to do so. But there was a lot going on this morning because of lots of curses. Indeed there was. And the Hawks of the 21. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on, I need to add... Turn. Because it adds you guys separately, that's why. Okay, and now I need to roll for Valen and her skilly. I'm gonna have it go on the same turn as she is, just, just for sake of ease. I feel like that's just easier for any summon. It really is. That should is. just be the rule. She guys should go like directly after her, and then for these these handy boys. Just a straight dex. Oh, surprisingly good for <laughs> zero plus zero dexterity. Okay. So, let me switch up the music here. <laughs> and the, the sound that you hear is this is the sound they're making. That's the, my dog snoring is the sound that they're making as they're approaching. It's the strained uh, ethereal energy, clearly. No, I'm just picturing uh, evil cackling as they are floating towards us. One of them's wearing some dapper glove, a dapper glove on. <laughs> it's literally just master hand. All right, so Meepo. And crazy hand. Yeah, Meepo, you I'm are first. you are currently first. You see outside, you kind of like as you finish your ceremony, you have the vial of holy water in your hand then you you see you kind of hear that kind of scampering and you look behind and you see the ethereal blue glow of these spectral hands that are all now closing in on the bridge okay i'm going to quickly stop her and store the holy water and bonus action sanctuary now that help us i'm going to use the uh devotee of eldoth i think it is to do that And then, let's bonus action, my action. Ah, uh, why not? I'll use, um, emboldening block on the crew. Alrighty. And just so that you guys don't forget, emboldening bond also has the protective bond feature. Alrighty. And then I'm gonna move. Where's it? Yes, I'll be a little slip there. I guess I'll move over to here. And that's my turn. Alright. Hawks Hagnard is your turn. These hands are starting to close in on you menacingly, just cl clasping and unclasping their hands. Am I able to step up onto the ledge of the bridge like this? You are, yes. With your increased size, you are able to just barely kind of leap, like kind of lean over the edge in the, kind of like a almost kind of squatting position. All right. Well, uh, I might as well use my giant's might. That won't make me any bigger. Because you know, your I don't say your your muscles will swell slightly. 
And then I will try to bop this hand twice with my axe, which is magical. Indeed. For an 18. An 18 will actually miss. An 18 will miss. Indeed. Interesting. Indeed. You watch... As your axe kind of clashes against the hand, the hand will grab the axe and just kind of hold it in place with its with its, each individual finger and just kind of flex its fingers and then outward, and it pushes you back slightly. These hands have an immense amount of strength that just seems to act as almost a form of shield in a way. Did you add emboldened bond to that? I did not, which I can for uh, 22. Okay, 22 will hit then. As it kind of flicks your your hand backward, uh, you kind of like use the momentum to kind of sh lurch yourself back forward, managing to chop partially into the, into the ethereal energy. Okay, and then there's a D8 of bonus damage for Giant's Might. So, glad uh, I went first. Eleven, eleven magical slashing. Okay, you'll watch as the form of the hand begin to shimmer slightly. It does seem like it took damage, and it doesn't seem like it resisted it. It seems like even though it's not bleeding in any way, it seems to be affecting the creature. So, is that your turn? Yes, that is all I will do for now. It is now the Living Hands' turns. This one is going to come right up to you, Skinuck. And I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. As it reaches in, and the fingers begin to enclose around you. It is trying to grab you. 17. Okay. With that, you will kind of use your tiny little cobalt body to kind of scurry out of the way just in time, thankfully. And the, and the hand will clasp empty space and just kind of flex just kind of, like, wiggles its fingers in your direction. Uh, the one next to Hawks... Let me see here. Hmm. Uh... I'm gonna... Yeah, the, this one will hop, begin to hover up this direction. I'm gonna say kind of hovers, like, right here, up on next to the wall. And it's going to kind of clench its fist into a ball, and then... Shoo, it is going to try and bop you. Give you a solid arcane punch. With a force fist. Alright. Uh, that's going to be a 27 to hit. Wow. Not much I can do about that. That'll be, funnily enough, 27 points of force damage. As you get clocked, full force, this fist is punching right into your large form and it it feels like it could push you five feet if it wanted to with the force it's pushing, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. It just seems to be going for just a straight damage. Uh, this one over here, however, it is also going to try and close in and is going to do the same to try and punch you, Hux. Uh, now I know that I know... Now that I know how hard they hit, I will say that if this is going to hit me, I will use it to redirect the damage to the first one. I will use the uh, Cloud Rune. Cloud Rune, okay. And the 26 would definitely hit you, but you use this ability. So which one is that? Is that this one right here? Or is it the, uh, this one? Yeah, it's. Um, I'm using it against the other one that's already injured. Okay, gotcha. So in that case, that'll be one... That'll be not as good of a roll. A 16 points of force damage against that hand. In the almost master hand and Chris's crazy hand moment, the two fists collide, knuckle versus knuckle, and you hear a not quite a crunching sound because there's no bone, but the force, the arcane force of them, begins to spark and crackle, and they both kind of shake their hand uh, at the same time as if they as if in pain, but they both kind of wiggle their fingers at you in annoyance. But that is their turn. Skinuck, it is your turn. You are currently surrounded on all sides. Oh. Oh, that's not fun. Now, uh, let's see. It's Master Hand, Crazy Hand, and Glover. <laughs> Glover. 
<laughs> that, that's this one up here, the one that missed. <laughs> And then if we run into any others, it'll be like the RV's oven mitt and, um... <laughs> no, alright, alright, alright. Well, um... One of these is the hand sticking out of the toilet in all the Legend of Zelda games. <laughs> no! No! Disembodied hand. Paper! Paper! Oh, pretty, pretty cursed. It has yep. some toilet paper stuck to one of its fingers. <laughs> No, but that's in so many of the games. It's in... No, no, no. I, I know, I know. Trust me, I, I got your reference. I appreciated it. Let's get up. What are you doing? Okay. Sorry for this. I'm going to... Um... That's okay. I'm going to cast Shatter, I think. Okay. Yeah. Don't I cast Shatter? So... Yeah, they hit pretty much. They don't Let's seem see organic. That. They certainly don't seem organic, so 10-foot radius. Is there a place I can put this? That's Oh, there is not. Um, mm, maybe I shouldn't have moved in. Eh? No. Maybe I will not be casting Shatter, because I don't want to, like, delete skills. <laughs> this, is a dex this is a con save, so it wouldn't be good for the thing. So I think instead I'm going to cast Scorching Light. Fair enough. Now, these will have disadvantage because you are next to them. But they're also all next to uh, Hawks. Oh, yes, so... that's right. So it's their straight. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Pack tactics. Mm -hmm. Pack tactics. So it's fun. Uh, Except for the top one is not next to Hawks. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna gamble. I'm gonna put two into the one that... I'm gonna put the first one into the one that's damaged, and we'll see what we have. Right. Scorching Ray. Normal. Will be a... Uh, a 16 with the emboldening button, unfortunately, will miss. Right. Let's see. Then yeah, more for him. Amazingly high AC for what they are. 22? A 22. Now that will certainly hit. A 4. That is minimal damage. Oof. Sorry, man. Yeah, but it'll be 8 fire total. Oh, wait, no. Actually, that is 10 fire because I have elemental addict. Ah, yes, that's right. And then one more for that guy. 20. There we go. 20 is their AC. Excellent. They he takes another 5. That's terrible. So he's still a right. The arcane force, kind of like that is seemingly manifesting their form, is beginning to shimmer and shift in a way that is almost dissipating. It seems to be close to ap dis disappearing entirely, but it's still holding on, barely. Oh, cool. Um, you know, I probably should have done this first. Yeah, probably should have done this first. I'm going to walk up here, and then I'm going to step away. Okay, so you will get an attack of opportunity from one of them. Actually, yeah, actually, no, from both of them, actually. All three of them? No, 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 sorry, not, oh. not, not this one up here. This one up here was out of, you, uh, out of reach of you. They have a shorter reach, mm -hmm. so just these two. All right, let's see what we got. All right. Let's stop here to see if I die. Stop, stop or not. there. Okay, no, no, that's that's fine. That's fine. Like you know, stop there, resolve, and then forward if I have a thing. Uh, hold on. Uh, Seventeen. That will miss. Okay, so the first one will miss. Uh, the second one is an eighteen. Also misses. Oh, well, there we go. Both miss. Oh, I should have done that before. Oh well. <laughs> Come and get me then. Alrighty. Is that your turn? Yes. Alright. Scales, it's now your turn. As you're sitting there lazily on the couch, you suddenly see the chaos unfolding before you. What do you do? Bah. <laughs> you love this spell so much. I enjoy so much when you cast it. That is great, because I have advantage. Yeah, boy! Awesome spell. Oh yeah, because pack tactics. Yeah, for for these toys, I don't think it's this one, right? But it's these two. Yeah, just the bottom two, and then the third one will be a normal roll. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, take your rolls, my friends. Ooh yeah, that little that'll, uh, little hit the uh, little hit that one right there. You watch as its form. Shh, you begin to slice, and its form separates into two and disappears entirely. He's off the map. Uh, 18 for the second one. Unfortunately, 
will miss. Uh, oh wait, but the emboldening bond will turn that into a hit. So that'll be 24 points of force damage. <laughs> well, a 26 definitely hits. 49 points of force damage. That, that's disgusting. I love it. Um, as you slash across this one, its form almost disappears entirely, but it is barely holding on, almost like the other one was. And then I will... Uh... Unsettling words is boyo, right? Gotcha. Eh. I, I, I hate I hate when it rolls so long. It's so it's so unfortunate. But you never know if that one will matter. You know, given how bounded accuracy works with 5e. We'll see. Is that your turn? Is that your turn? That is my turn. I am not gonna move. And what a turn it was. Uh it's now Valin's turn. She kind of rolls up her sleeves. All right, I just learned a new spell. I'm not afraid to use it. I'm going to risk this because it's going to be explosive. Oh? Uh, well, not quite in your way. It'll be in... Uh -huh. I wouldn't say my way, but it was the damage's way. Anyway, lightning bolt! Shoom! As a bolt of lightning shoom, shoots out in that direction, both of them now need to make dexterity saves. Uh, 10 and the natural one, both of them will fail. Uh, 24 points of lightning damage, meaning this one will get taken out, right away its form disappears, and this one is barely holding on. Ha! Oh, that felt good! Please kill it before it kills me. That is, uh, that is a turn. Leapo, it is your turn. Oh, no, no, before it's your turn. It's the skeleton. Pops up. It's like, Minion, help! Save me! <laughs> Save me, Minion! minion. Bop, bop. Don't you know its name already? Didn't we get a name from the gargoyles? The journals? I don't think we did. I don't think we cared. Hang on, one, one second. Uh, hold on. I have to actually have to double check. I they actually have magic resistance. Hold on a second. I have to actually roll. We roll their saves. I don't think it'll matter. Uh, it didn't matter. Okay, I have to remember that. So thank you for the thank you for the mention. Uh, I appreciate that. Also. <clears throat> appreciate that. Um. So. Yeah, the minion is going to kind of like lurch up. Because he doesn't have a weapon per se, he's just gonna climb up this way. He's gonna bap him. <laughs> Come on! To the best around. <laughs> okay, let me let me explain something about skeletons and natural twenties. Yeah. The second campaign I was ever in was a campaign that I brought my first character into college. Because he jumped, through, he was shot through a wormhole or something like that. It was just an excuse to let me bring my character to college. Mm -hmm. One of the other characters was playing oh, a goodness. necromancer, like a six or seven year old necromancer, and the DM was with a random roll table for loot in a hag's uh, treasury, and they found a um, vorpal sword in said cave. Hmm. They gave it to the skeleton of the necromancer because, you know, if you oh, cut God. your own head off, what it's a, it's a skeleton. You just reanimate it, right? <laughs> so we get into this fight against this Rakshasa, and this Rakshasa calls in, call uh, summons the demon that's possessing my character, and I do a full body transformation into a bone devil. Turn one, the skeleton comes up. 
Hits me with a verbal sword for a critical hit, cutting off the demon's head. Ooh. And I'm just like... That was anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, no, 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 that's a good rant. I, I appreciate it. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't kill it, but it... it the, the, the skeletal fist just... But just like punches like square like in in like the palm so, and, and the force kind of shudders slightly it's not quite dead if it didn't kill it then it gets a lingering injury right it hurts its morale <laughs> you, all right you know what hang on i just want to see what a lingering injury on a giant floating force I, hand I finger off okay all right all right so it's a seven <laughs> You, <laughs> you watch as the, the arcane forces on the inside of the hand begin to shatter as it as the form of the, of the spectral hand just almost like a like a um like a hairline fracture. Almost like you, like a um like an iron ball uh hitting a, a pane of glass. Like a, like a bulletproof glass. It just kind of fractures on the inside. And it just kind of kind of twitches. I would, in that case, Skanuck, if it rolled a two and lost a hand, I would count it as losing a finger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd probably do. Uh, but in any case, uh, Meepo, it's your turn now. Alright. Uh, I feel like I'm not really needed in this fight. Anybody hurt? Uh, Hawks is. Yeah, villain points towards Hawks. Alright, Hawks, here we come. I'm going to cast it upcast. I think it probably was worth it. Use once. At second level. Didn't ask for me to upcast, but okay. Uh, so it's 2d8 plus 5. On Hawks. Of course, it's always like that. Ah. It's better than nothing. Yeah, he took a pretty big hit from that. That's why I upcast it, hoping it would actually do something, but I didn't. Because first level spells hate me. Well, first level spells that re require rolls. Alrighty. Is that your turn, Meepo? Uh... I'm going to move back, just in case somebody wants to do any shenanigans. <laughs> in that case, Hawks, it is your turn. Well, knowing these things are so hard to hit, I actually am just going to roar in this thing's face. And thing. I'm going to roar in its general direction. To give myself some advantage. Attempt to pop it twice. 26. 26. All right, how would you like to destroy the spectral creation? I'm going to sink my hand, my axe into its palm and then kick it off the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, it kind of impacts, like, right in, in between the pointer and middle finger. As it kind of, like, sits there, you, you kind of, like, embed it, it embeds itself in there and you put your foot... Square in the in the in the palm of the hand, and you you push, and the the palm will fall backward. It's its fingers outstretched, wiggling as it falls down. And you, as you lean over the side, it falls a good like sixty or so feet before it impacts the solid ice, and it scatters into a million shards of ethereal arcane energy and disappears entirely. And with that, combat draws to a close. Oh, <sighs> well, Lillian kind of, kind of says as she dusts, dusts herself off. That is something that I perhaps might have expected to find. I believe I might actually know what those are. Yes, yes, she does. I believe uh, 
The term that is, is used, I believe, is known as living spells. Usually they are created as the result of some great magical catastrophe, or when a spellcaster creates such a magic, uh, an intense magical phenomena that decimates a local area. As such, these are basically fragments of spells left behind in such, in such uh, catastrophes or phenomena, essentially. Uh, they're masterless, rudderless, and basically <sighs> creatures of... Uh, how to... I wouldn't even say intuition. They're sort of mindless, almost. Without a purpose. So, do they, like, have, like, clues as to what caused the thing, or what they were doing at the time, or what? What do you mean? randomly picked. What do you mean? Like, for instance, if the wizard was casting that spell when the catastrophe happened, would it tell us, like, what the wizard might have been doing, or...? Possibly, uh... Was it something that caused the catastrophe? Had something to do with that mm, spell? Unlikely. When it comes to magic, it, it might it be as simple as... Was it casting the magic itself, the spell in question? This was, I believe, a spell known as... Uh, Arcane Hand. Uh, I have somewhat high level. I It's too powerful for someone like me to cast, but honestly, uh, an arcane catastrophe of this proportions, it could be any sort of spell, likely. Uh, didn't even, would not, perhaps not even be the spell needed to be a part of whatever happened. It could just be a random spell. I've seen living lightning bolts, living burning hands, there's all sorts of things, spells that could have Seemingly apparated from such events. Seemingly at random. In any case, though, I did not expect uh, my new minion to do as well as they did. I would like, I would ask, does someone have an extra weapon that he, they could use? I did have a mace, but we turned it into a spike to kill a vampire. <laughs> Right, and I right. think it's still there. Now, I got the head of the mace. Yeah. Wait, no, we use that as a catapult. Right. Normally skeletons are more dexterous rather than strength-based. Uh, uh, I have a, a crossbow. Ah, oh, a crossbow. That would be perfect. It's a light crossbow. Yes, if, you're, if you don't have any use for it, could you perhaps... Uh... No, go ahead. Feel free. Excellent. Do you know how many... Uh, how and many I have 19 crossbow bolts here. 19 bolts. Excellent. Thank you. We just uh, add that to the skeleton's inventory. It's a light crossbow, you said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. The reason I carried weapons with me. <laughs> the whole <laughs> reason. Had... It was worth it the entire time. <laughs> All for this moment. We should keep an eye out for further weapons if we're going to pick up more of these things. Because that was my last one. Good call. Well, I believe if we're going to dilly-dally, we might need to do so elsewhere. But the question is, where to go from here? Let me just, uh, put it back to the map. We didn't find anything else in this place. No, you pretty much cle cleaned it out the last time you were here. You rolled, really, you rolled well enough to distract the gargoyles that you pretty much cleaned it out of anything useful. Okay. You get around. There's no furniture. <laughs> well, useful things at the very least. I mean, if you want to take the furniture, be my guest, but, you know. Well, when we were standing up on that ledge, looking down on the city, there was a big area that looked like a forest. And then, uh, Scales said something about a theater. I don't know, maybe Skinnuck did, I don't know. I believe it was Scales, so, uh, actually. I believe Scales found a poster of yeah. some kind. So... Why don't we go towards the forest and then see if we can find the theater after that? Sounds good to me. Alright. Alrighty. Uh, well, we let don't us have, to have any way of traveling, do we? Now, it'll have to be on foot, unfortunately. It's good enough. It's good enough as it is. There, there are many. The, the city has destructive, as destroyed as it is. I mean, it clearly. I mean, we've seen buildings falling down. We've seen roadways blocked. 
It would be inconvenient to have horses or even your Axbeak friend. It'd be difficult for them to get around certain points of the city. Though it's probably best to be on foot anyway. Plus, if we're going in that direction from what we saw, it's going to be he a heavily urbanized area. Plenty of different alleyways, different ways to get lost in, perhaps. Difficult to say. Light bulb. The scales have an idea. A. I have polymorph. B. I have the wing of boots. Mm. Um. A giant eagle is always an option, yeah? Yep, yep. If we polymorphed Hawks, since he's slightly bigger than a giant eagle already, then we could all be on his back and he could just whoosh us wherever. If we want to do that, that can probably help us get out of the city so we don't have to rest inside the city. That's true. Makes sense, makes sense. So maybe we walk down to where we're going and then polymorph fly out? I'm family with that. That means you have to consider your spell slots if, if it's not... Uh, That's um, simple. Right. I can always mock people to death if I need to. I've seen you do it. It's frankly horrifying. Right. I kind of turn my eyes when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. But, uh... Yeah. I have watched. <laughs> So then, Belinda will kind of, kind of dust herself up a little bit more. Shall we head off then? Towards the Arboretum. I can never ta turn down a good grove. Yes, did anyone actually want that trophy? Scott brings up a good point. Oh, right. What does it do again? I wasn't paying attention. I was, uh, focusing on my spell. Ah, well, uh, uh yes, yeah, Skanuck, uh, actually, stone of, yeah, go ahead. Stone of good luck, you said? Oh, right. It's mm -hmm. a stone. So it's a plus one to all ability checks and all saving throws. Um, I'm not super concerned about that. Does it require being attuned to it? It does. Uh, yes. I have attunement slots if nobody else does. I'm going to hold on to it until further notice. Well, I don't really need it, I don't think, but it couldn't hurt. It's fine to me. Sounds good to me. All right, so guys, do you all head off then towards the forest that you had seen earlier? Sure. Okay. So, in that case... The name of that game called... Which game? Chain Lightning. Oh, yeah, Chain Lightning, yes. As you start heading towards this direction, you will notice that villain, Villain's assessment was correct. You are indeed heading to a more urbanized section of the city. You will see tall obsidian spires as you begin to kind of cloud, your, cloud the vision around you. But the most, uh, <clears throat> most eye-attracting feature of this section of the city 
is this obsidian spire that is attached almost in like an archway, like a long tendril towards the vast central spire of the city in this direction. Uh, but otherwise, you have to kind of go through a couple of different ways in order to get to your destination. It, the alleyways and buildings kind of wind and weave in a very densely packed sprawl. It doesn't take too much more time than usual, um, but you do have to climb over a few built, a few knocked over buildings, uh, some displaced rubble. It is, it is a bit of a mess, but it's un, it's not surprising. Uh... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. With that though. Uh, Hawks, you gain another foot. You're now 16 foot 9. So what? <clears throat> really just, uh... Really moving up in the world. Does he have any changes to his stats at this point? Uh, not at the moment, no. Not yet. What is it? Yeah, not, yeah, not yet. Close, but no cigar. Close, but no spaghetti. Upsidy, puskity. Alright, so, as you guys near the Arboretum, I'm going to have to grab your tokens. So give me just a moment. Uh, where did I put you all? Because these tokens have specifically the Lin's step. New spells on the step block. And can't forget a uh, good old skeleton buddy who is now a, a clearly clear staple, new staple of the group. A solid team player. There we go. Move everyone around. Okay, here we go. So, let me move. Uh, let's see. Let me move the maps here. Let me adjust this on roll 20 on, on the stream as well. Okay, so let me describe for you what you see. You will see before you what appears to be a canopy of golden leaves that crowns the trees inside of this sunken basin. The trees that you see grow in stark contrast to the bleak, gray, and desolate surroundings. Their branches almost seem to sway, even though the air around this arboretum is deathly still. You notice that um, in this kind of hollow in the city floor, you notice that there are vents spaced around the section, the sec this particular section. Uh, it seems that they are uh, kind of surrounding what appears to be a perimeter wall of some kind. Uh, it is that um, they're emitting this puffy gray vapor which rises above the treetops and you see as they begin to rise, they form miniature little clouds which then disperse almost like rain. You notice that above the ar this arboretum, there is a, it appears to be a hemisphere, a hemispherical dome, which appears to be projecting a false sky, but it seems that occasionally it begins to flicker between that of a wild storm and a vast field of stars. Well, this is certainly interesting. It reminds me of the other grove, but on a more controlled scale. Perhaps this is what the other grove used to look like before it was displaced. Do you think there's a dryad here? Hello? Anybody home? It's Sylvan. What did you say? I'm so sorry. My, my headphones have been acting weird recently regarding volume. 
Uh, what did you say? Could you repeat that? I said, hello, anybody home in Sylvan? Because I asked Villain if she thinks there was a dryad here. Okay, let me see here. Hmm. It does. There doesn't seem to be a response that you can tell, but go ahead and make a perception check. First check with the luck. Ha <laughs> ha! Hmm. Delightful. <laughs> I will say there is one thing that you notice as you are looking into this arboretum. The central tree, right there, right there in the center, it appears, at first glance, to be a normal tree. But then there is something that you notice about the bark uh, at the central point where the forked branches of the tree, of the tree trunk split off at the top there appears to be a gnarled oaken face sitting in the tree, or they're attached to the tree, rather. And the branches towards the side almost resemble arms. That is what you notice. But it is unmoving, and it is non-responsive to your... Does it question. Do its eyes look closed? The eyes on the face appear to be closed. Hmm. There are times that I wish I was a druid of Eldath. This is one of those times. Well, to mind uh, let's see. Eldath, would you, would you move all of the dryads that are in this city and from this city to your glade, the ever melt? Divine intervention. Okay. Go ahead and make that roll, buddy. Roll that 1d100. So mm -hmm. Too high. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. It does it does ring true that Eldath is a god, is a goddess that she is known for, for peace, but that with peace comes pacifism, comes inaction, in in its worst case. She does not seem to respond to your call, though she feels the urgency and recognizes the passion with which you speak, and it is appreciated, but you feel that she cannot act at this time. Mm, maybe something's wrong with the dryads and they can't be moved in yet. Is there anything magical going on with them? As you, go, as you come in, the only tree that seems to be different from the other is the central tree. The other trees, as you all begin to walk in and inspect... I'm under the tree here. Are you under that tree? Okay. Yeah. Um, as you get close to the tree, with your natural 20, I'll say that continues over, you will hear just a faint... Deep snore. But, uh, you are next to it, and yet there is no reaction. How much do I know about dryads? Roll a nature check for me. And you don't know too much about them. You know that they're face spirits that are bound to the trees in which they come from. But I'd say even with the ten, you don't think this is a dryad. You think this is something else. Because dryads, they come out of the tree, right? This seems to be the tree. 
I was, I was just wondering if it might be like asleep because it's like fall. Because look at the leaves, they're all orange and I didn't know. What do you think, Scales? In your kind of travel, Scales, you... It's a bit too far south for you to have ever encountered one. And given the, the tundral nature of the dale, you definitely, it definitely, you don't know the name of these creatures, but you've heard tales of creatures that take the form of plants. Nature, nature's guardians, they're sometimes called. Though you know very little about them, you know you've heard stories of these trees being protectors of the forest and summoning other, summoning the trees around them to animate, to act in their defense. But so like a big brother of Bean. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> yeah, yes, in a way. The the big tree version of Bean. Other than that, the tree does not seem to respond to your presence as you get close to it. Hmm. Any reaction of some kind? Is there, what do you notice? He seems to be sleeping. Ah, oh, well, let's wake him up then. <clears throat> kind of snaps your fingers. Hello? <clears throat> I'm speaking to you. <clears throat> she will say in Elvish first. Uh, and then she will say in uh, Loras, with the help of Professor Scant. Professor Scant, can you translate for me? Uh, absolutely, Miss Valin. <clears throat> and you will begin translating. <clears throat> you will watch as the face kind of begin to contort. And lazily, the two oaken eyes begin to open, making loud, almost like the sounds of opening doors for each individual eyelid opening. And the... Well, that's a little unsettling. Indeed. And you will watch as these bright, white, glowing eyes will gaze back at you. Oh! Uh, thank you, Amlove1113 for the rating of the party of 12. Thank you! <laughs> Welcome! Yes, welcome, welcome We're to the- deep in the midst of, uh, exploring an ancient city. Indeed. Very Should deep we within... introduce our characters? Uh, only, 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 if you, only if you like. But yes, we're deep within- My name is Meepo oh, Molo. I'm a kobold peace cleric of Eldath. Hey man, I'm Skmuck. I'm not a tourist. But I'm Hawks Hagnar. Um, I'm a uh, Rune Knight fighter, also a Kobold, uh, but I'm, I've got a little extra bigness happening lately, so uh, this isn't the normal bigness from being a Rune Knight. Yeah, there, there's some there's some strange uh, giant magic happening with that regard. And I'm Scales. Um, just Scales. Nothing. Spectacular over here. Tell him your class scales. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh... I'm... kind of the group bard? And he's quite eloquent when he needs to be. And scary when he's angry. Indeed. And currently, we are in the midst of the final chapters of Rhyme of the Frostbane. So if any of you have not, or intend to play Rhyme of the Frostbane, avoid uh, ga avoid your gaze for spoilers from the module. But if you wish to watch, by all means, please. Uh, Curly, to describe what is happening at the moment, the tree appears to awaken itself. As I described before, its oaken eyes will begin to slowly open with these loud... Knock, the loud creaking noises, and these white glowing eyes begin to peer out from them. It will say in Sylvan, those who speak Sylvan. 
who visits me in my arboretum? Are you fledgling mages here to gain your wands from my oaken branches? Is that a thing? Yeah, see? There well, you go. You just have to apply some natural force. The villain will kind of uh, happily kind of fold her arms and give a satisfied uh, does nod. Does villain speak Sylvan? She does not. She will nod her head and look towards you. Uh, well, uh, none of us are here for that. Um, but we are interested in the arcane, so um, I'm going to uh, translate for uh, you while uh, these people ask some questions. Uh, Very maybe... well. Proceed. All right. Thanks. Um, just a second. Touch. Understand. Ah, you're looking at your spell, I see. Yeah, I am looking at a spell. I'm going to upcast it because I don't have spell slots of this lot, so I'm going to waste a slot higher, sadly. Ah, excellent. Because I've used curse a lot. Or remove curse a lot today. Ah, I see. You're to your... Tongues on the tree. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. So with that, everything is now made much easier, as now all of you can perfectly understand the speech of the tree. Oh. Ask your questions and I may or not be obligated to answer them. It all depends on the questions in question. What kind of questions are off limits? Ones that annoy me. Ah, I see. Would asking if a question would annoy you? Annoy you? Yes! So okay, that question I will up. ask it then. Good! You will watch as the branches kind of begin to shh, begin to shake a little bit in frustration. Clearly this tree has a little bit of a temper to it. You, you said something about uh, wands. Um, could you explain what that's about? Um, the city's kind of been in ruins for thousands of years, so... We're all kind of curious, kind of, more about how it works. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. They I have known as the Nether Oak. For centuries, the Netherese mages crafted their wands and their staffs from the wood of my humble and powerful oak, saturated in profane magic. And as such, he suddenly like interrupts as you begin to open your mouth, Hox. He will so you will, there's a pause for a minute as he then begins to interrupt you. <laughs> and only should you desire the dark and mysterious power of evil purposes, will I bequeath unto you my branches. So, do you desire power? Um, what kind of power do your wands produce, exactly? Power! He does not seem to elaborate. Does it have to be profane? Yes! Well, then I say no, sir. Not for can me, we, at least. Um, can we get something that's just slightly unpleasant? <laughs> the, the tree will look down towards you, Meepo. Then you are a terrible disappointment. Leave my sight at once! Little, tiny, uh, disappointing apprentice. Be gone from this place! And wallow in your... Goody two shoes, nature. I'm walking away. <laughs> Maybe this is why Eldath didn't pick these uh, trees up and plop them in his her grove. It suddenly starts to make sense to you, Meepo. It's all coming Nodding together. I walk away in agreement. <laughs> so, for those of us that kind of are okay 
with... No. It goes back to your question. Well, um, then, how I mean people. General unpleasantness is fine. It might be agreeable. Convince me. Well, I'm pretty good at throwing a convincing argument. So, here I go. Um, and we as adventurers, we have come across many people who have come to worship us. And with your powerful wands, we might be able to throw around some weight and also kill all of our enemies in our wake. Hmm. A very convincing argument. Go ahead and make a persuasion check for me. Hmm. Quite convincing. A convincing argument. Destruction of your enemies as they flee before you and terrorizing the populace. Yes, yes, I see. I see potential in you, young bud. Yes, yes, I sense it. Take and, yes, go ahead. And this one over here likes to set things on fire, and that one raises the dead. Yes, yes, you will see the tree begin to kind of shake its branches even more violently than before, but in a positive way, in some uncomfortable way. Uh, yes, I will bequeath unto you my branches. Make use of them, my pupils. Wreak destruction of the surface world. <laughs> Bring it all to ash and ruin. <laughs> <laughs> and the tree will lean its branches downward and will give unto each of you a, a solid oaken branch from its gnarled roots. But of course, you, um, Meepo, you as, as villain kind of like things to the side as you offer that suggestion, if the professor has any questions, she'll say, oh, right, of course. <clears throat> the professor, do you have any questions? I'm, like yelling that into the grove because I walked out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're like yelling from like the distance. Hey, Blood. Uh, but no, yes, she will uh, get out Professor Scant, the the uh, metallic orb of her family heirloom. She will lift it upward. Professor, do you have any questions for the individual, for the the plant? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, excuse me. Um, um good sir. Uh, madam. Uh, tree. Um, I was curious. Uh, at the central part of the spire, there appears to be uh, some sort of force field or a way to get to get in. There's no way inside that I can see, and my mistress is interested in seeing the inside of that spire. Is there any way on the inside that you can uh, recommend to us? The tree will begin to ponder this question. Yes, that is the power of which I speak. The power to be the apprentices to the great Iriolathis, the lich lord that rules over all of Yithrin. But to enter the tower, you must first learn the arcane octad. Villain will lead in. What is the arcane octad? Well, to pass through the force field that surrounds the spire of Eurylathis, one must perform the rite upon the spire's doorstep. But first you must f perform eight steps that I do not remember, save for my own, which is to... Have one of my wands of power in your possession. 
And then hopefully you'll get you'll be responded to within eight to ten business days. And then uh, hopefully you'll be selected from among the many many candidates that Rio Lathis has. No refunds. Where would we find the uh, the other rights? I do not know. Um, I kinda, the tree kind of like turns to the side, turns the other side. Perhaps they are scattered throughout the city. I mean, if you were truly uh, arcane students waiting to wreak havoc upon the surface world, surely you would be smart enough to figure out where those might be. It could be your first assignment as my own pupils. Well, I think someone who's intelligent enough uh, also knows when to ask questions, so... The tree will pause. That is a fair assessment. Hmm. I actually have a uh, an unrelated question for you. Ask away. You said that your uh, your branches, the wands made from them, they're nice and profane and accursed and you know. Yes, profane, dark. Would you consider yourself to be an expert in materials of the like? Accursed, profane, bad. Yes. <laughs> the tree will lean down. Well, actually, you're you're not you're as you have gotten bigger. He doesn't have to lean down as much as far down as he would for the others of the group. So he's just eh, slightly tilted. But yes, he does uh, address you. So Hawks has something in his backpack that's been wrapped up for safekeeping for a while. That um has probably grown with him, unfortunately. Oh no, what is it? It is the, uh, Shardlin Gauntlet from oh. the Dwergar Lord. He I still has that. He still had that. I forgot he's had that it, had that too. He's had it wrapped up in his backpack. Um, I'm assuming that he disposed of the hand from the inside of it at some point. Yeah, um, otherwise it would because be... Because he probably. would not have... Yeah, he would not have kept held on to that for much longer. But, um, he does have the gauntlet still. A large sample of Shardolin. And I think we had discussed... Uh, Hawks is not saying this out loud. I'm, I'm just speculating here as a player. Yes. I think we had discussed needing a way of actually disposing of large amounts of it. So I'm hoping that we could maybe fish for some information, if he has saw any, on what to do with stuff like this. Disposing large amounts what, what, of Shardolin, you mean? Yes, yeah, so, or how to, like, unbatify it, maybe. Some hints of it. Now, obviously, I don't think he would tell us that, but I would like to get as much information about it as he can, as he has. Sure. So I'd hold it out and be like, what, what do you make of this? This is some supposedly very nasty stuff. There is a immediate sense of recognition in this creature's face, its gnarled wooden face, as its eyes kind of widen. Oh, yes. Charlene, the black eyes. But it's different from the ones that we made here in the city. This is infused with even darker and more malevolent magic than I'm familiar with. Mm. He gets very interested in this. I do not know why you would want to waste such a magnificent gift. You should put it on right now and truly live up to your potential. I see oh, actually. Uh, go, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I see it was made by someone we really, really don't like, and we're trying to just kind of like insult his memory on every level. Ah, yes, a trophy to humiliate your enemies. Admirable. Mm. Proceed with your questioning. So, uh, if we were really trying to very much humiliate this guy who uh, thought this stuff was the key to his victory before we, you know, kicked his butt. How would we go about, like, destroying it in a way that was very, you know, very, very, you know, ridiculed him a lot by doing it? Hmm. Roll a... <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. 
not my best thing to roll, but... Seven. Okay, well... Let's see here. Hmm. Is Skanuck not helping? Uh, you know what? Skanuck was helping with it. I'll say roll with advantage. Okay, well... Hmm... <laughs> Uh, and you see his brows kind of furrow slowly, and he will kind of give a sly look. I'm afraid I don't know of any way for such a thing, but if you would find out eventually, perhaps you'll perhaps you'll know. How about um? How about if we took an alternate route here? Let's say, since you don't know how to destroy it, that uh, we wanted a way of securing it in our trophy vault. So that none but us could uh, reach it. What would you use to store it and keep its malicious powers from being accessible by our enemies who might want to use it against us? Ah, well, there are, there are the living doorways that wander throughout the city. You could be trapped some object in one of those, perhaps. Uh, or, hmm, perhaps, if you wanted it out of your hands, perhaps you could strike a bargain with the sisters. Yes, the sisters. Uh, can, can, can we go back to the living doorway for a second? What was that all about? Sisters, <clears throat> yes, living doorways, the demi-planes that wander throughout the city. I have slept for a long time, but I occasionally awaken, and I see upon my gaze in my garden doorways that move and creak about. I've seen the... Poor forgotten apprentices sometimes fall in and never return. If you wish to dispose of something, throw it in one of them. Masses of shadow, perhaps no more than a doorway-sized, simply creaking and groaning as a wandering shadow throughout the city. Uh, You'll hear it before you see it. You know what's beyond the doorways? Nope. Has, has anyone come back from beyond the doorways? Some of them. Not often many of them. Interesting. It's not a very common occurrence. I mean, it's common enough that you see it from time to time. Yes, but that is a matter of the time is... Shut up. <laughs> the tree seems to become a bit cantankerous in being challenged. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep it in mind as a method of disposal then. Very well. Hux will wrap it back up and uh, put it away. Very well. And anyone else have any other questions for the tree? Nope. Very well. In that case, well, like you all... I... Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm just making a out-of-character comment about your DMing style that I've noticed. <laughs> oh, like no. No, don't put me on the spot. No. <laughs> there are hags. <laughs> okay. Look, here, okay. For anyone who's watching, <laughs> I, as a DM, have a particular habit of implementing... A, D a specific creature in D&D known as Hags, because I find their roleplay quite fun. However, I, I mentioned to my players that I have not purposefully not had any Hags in this adventure, and the adventure itself has not had any Hags so far, and when I said that, I was telling the truth. Um, but then I read this chapter, and lo and behold, <laughs> they're, <laughs> you know what? They're, they're Hags. <laughs> there are Hags. There are always hags. It's hilarious. I love it when you do hags because you're good with them. But 
Oh. You said the sisters, and I immediately went, oh, hags, weird. <laughs> I'm shrugging over here. Uh, yeah, okay, back to role-playing. Back to role-play, yes, back into it. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, you had no more questions for the tree. So in that I think case, I actually might have one more. Oh, okay, by all means. What, 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 what question? Uh, we noticed on our way to the city, coming here, that there were some uh, dark elves snooping about. You wouldn't happen to have any information on how they got down here. Hmm. Haven't the foggiest. Although, I do recall like some strange barrier was lifted over the city not, not too long ago. Perhaps that is how they got in. Interesting. Okay, well, that's about as much information as I think we're going to get on the subject. Is not too long ago like a year or like a couple days? Hawks, ask him, please. I don't think he's going to talk to me. Uh, <laughs> as you, as you well, shout from the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, so w what time scale are we talking about for not too long ago? Let me actually roll and see if he actually remembers, because it's time is is weird for him. Uh, okay, okay, not a bad roll. Perhaps within how long do mortal creatures live? Uh, a day or so ago. I days are strange here. So it could have been us entering the city that let them in, but that would imply that they were waiting to get in. Wasn't uh. Wasn't the thing that opened the city us, uh, you know, doing a violence? Mm. Oh, no, there was, like, that arcane lock. I remember now. Yeah, there are, like, three things that could have been. It could have been the reading of the thing. It could have been the um, mighty leap. And it could have been the beginning of the entire reason the campaign is even happening. Because if, if Arl's starting the whole campaign by doing her little tantrum <laughs> was what lifted it, then that could be one thing, and they could have been down here a little bit longer. And then if our uh, little Tustle was to blame, then that would have been like a couple weeks. And then if it was us coming in, then it was like a couple days. Interesting. So anywhere from a year to two days. <laughs> Around that time frame, you assume, given 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 the nature of the creature in question. Assumedly shorter amount of time, you would think. But in that case, I believe that was the last question you had for it, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the last thing I can think of. Very well. In that case, not being pastored anymore by any questions, the tree will simply say, and with that, I think I've had enough. Goodbye. And then they will, Arr! the two heavy oaken eyes will slowly creak shut loudly. Uh, and the white glow is gone, and the tree once again, <laughs> begins to sputter and slumber. We'll, uh, we'll leave the circle and catch up to Meepo and be like, that tree had no style. That tree had no grace. That tree had a funny face. How dare you? I agree. And? The audacity. That's pretty mean. It's a nice, nice reference you got there. You got any more? <laughs> Continue, my not at the Not at the moment, <laughs> says Hawks into the void. Very well. Clearly his, clearly his madness has been uh, catching up to him a little bit. Here's a question. What was the cause of that again? The cause of the madness? That specifically was, I believe, the trial of... Oh, right. Isolation. Yeah. Trial of isolation, yes. One of the four trials of Oral. That's what would cause the madness. <laughs> if only... 
if only I had been scales that had that, then he would be able to be the one spitting uh, these mean. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good point, scales. Hawks continually stepping on the bard's toes, casting vicious mockery on every creature ever. Just by just doesn't even need a spell, just his pure own sass. True. Innate spell casting doesn't require a spell slot. <laughs> exactly. So in any case, though, with that in mind, I will bring you all back to the main map. As first as I copy your tokens, right. just in case. As we uh, begin walking, I'm going to ask them what they think the other trials might be. Um, particularly wondering whether the uh, game that we played earlier might have been one of them, and whether this uh, cup trophy might be part of what we're looking for. Hmm. Villain will kind of stroke her chin. It's difficult to say. Given that it was a game, I would say no, but um, it could it could be. What are those over there? As you look in that direction, let me let me go ahead and take a look at the map here. Ah, uh, let me let me see. Valen will also look in that direction. Let's see. I would say, for anyone who wants to, all of you can go ahead and roll a perception check as you're looking out that way, and Valen will roll as well. Is there something that you might notice about this particular building? Oh wow, 22, a 21, pretty good, natural one, but that's okay. While we're doing this, that might be a good time to mention the maps. Yes, that would be a very good thing to mention. Now, for all the viewers who are tuning in with us tonight, uh, the map that you had just seen previously of the Arboretum, and the music that you had been, that you uh, might not have heard, uh, that particular music, uh, Let's start with the maps. The maps themselves were made by a, a lovely and talented person by the name of Tessa Moorcroft on DM's Guild. A very talented person. If you're looking for any maps that are perhaps in From Rhyme of the Frostmaiden or even Curse of Strahd or uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, you go ahead and go and visit this link right here in the chat. Uh, if you're looking for any maps as well, if you hear any music during combat, uh, that music will be... Music by the wonderful and talented Travis Savoie in his Winter's Wrath album. I love his stuff. He's very talented in what he does. Just a very talented and wonderful people all, all around. Uh, let's see. 8 Perception, Natural 1, 21, 22. And Valen herself also rolls pretty well. Okay. Get that in mind. It's a group success. I will say that the building that you had just pointed out, uh, you, will see, you, you will see the writing on the front. There's a large plaque that has these large letters written in the Loros language of, the, of Netheril, uh, which you cannot read per se except for Hux, uh, as well as, let's see, as well as Villain would also know it via Professor Scant. You would see that it reads Grand Library of Yathrin. Oh, maybe you can learn about the trials there, the, the rituals of the... Who are they tasked? Rituals, trials, there's eight of them. I believe it was we the, got the, wands. the arcane octad, I believe the tree described it. Uh, yeah, the eight magical thingies we gotta do. A simplified, a simplified version, but yes, well, she, she, she kind of like winces slightly, but is forgiving of the, uh, of the quip. Yeah, maybe we can learn about them in there. Oh, I for one would... Gladly like to see such a library. Hopefully none of the books have been damaged in the fall. The professor's gonna have a field day in there. <laughs> You'll just hear a muffled <laughs> a muffled laughed muffled uh, laughter from Villain's pocket. You might want to get your bag ready, Skinuck. Oh, which one? The one that's holding Stuff that we might not want, but we might want for somebody else. Like, I, no. I'm assuming you're splitting them into two. For one for one. us, yes. one for other people. There's one for us, and there's one for 
one for yeah. overgrown lizards with the with megalomania. Ah, okay. Danger bag. Danger yes. bag. Because I believe you have two bags of holding now from both finding one and making one, correct? Yep. Yes. Good old artificers and natural loot tables. Okay. So, you, in that case, I believe you all are heading towards the library in that case, correct? Might as well. Yes. Very well. Then let me switch over back to this. I hate how I hate how squeaky my chair is. I I always become aware of it when I'm when I'm recording. All right, in that case, you begin to head over towards the library. Don't hate it. Lean into it. <laughs> we'll see. Squeak the chair aggressively. Flex upon them all. Oh, now as I try and squeak the chair, now it's not responding. It, it, it's rebelling against me. I told you that's how you fix it. I didn't tell you what I was telling you, but that's what I told you. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, back to the game. So, this colossal building, as you approach it, has many lofty turrets in a state of disrepair. The ground below is littered with their rubble, but there is a giant-sized door at the base of the structure that stands slightly ajar. Do you head inside? I'm going to cast, um... Death Ward on myself, finally, because I keep forgetting to get around to it. How do you cast Death Ward on yourself? Let me see here. I need to grab your tokens again, because for some reason I only copied the skeleton and not the rest of you. Because I... <laughs> so let me fix that. All right, pause, pause, pause. I like how Hawks still has the turret on this map, even though he doesn't actually still have it. Right, right. Do, do, do. That was, uh, our resident artificer put the turret on our giant kobold friend's shoulder as like a mounted cannon for the funsies. Indeed, and it was glorious to behold. All right, so was. in that case, let me move you all towards this new map now. So, the door is slightly ajar, and Valin is the first to enter, eager to gain the secrets that lie within. As you all enter in, shelves line the walls of this labyrinthine library, crammed with books on every conceivable support, every conceivable space, and most likely, every conceivable subject. There are sections of the library where books are tattered and scattered about every which way. Some of their pages shredded and lost to time. But so, I'm, go ahead. I'm not huge yet, so I can still squeeze through this door, right? Correct. You are not technically huge yet, given the magic that has been uh, placed upon you, so you can squeeze barely through the door. Okay, yeah. don't want to step on the table. Uh, okay. The door creaks as you push through. I'm, I'm casting Emboldening Bond on a uh, villain scales. Knuck. And uh Hawks, how's your investigation? Uh, probably not very good. Not very good. Okay. Uh on a scale the, the Professor. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, zero. Yeah, I'm gonna cast it on the professor uh scales Skanuck in the and uh Lynn. That is true. <laughs> Scales. So, not soon after you enter this structure, you hear a, a curious sound. What sounds like tiny little wheels 
be. It better not be that stupid fish. <laughs> oh man, that's a different that's campaign. A it's not even. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. I'm not even going to address oh, that. I'm just going to move on. Uh, coming around the corner of this structure, one of the shelves. You watch as a curious fox-like bipedal humanoid turns around the corner and behind them there is a what looks to be a penguin with 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 uh, white pure white albino plumage and a large feathery plume upon their brow that completely covers their eyes most likely blinding them from how much there is and the penguin in question is saddled and collared to what appears to be a cart that is lined and piled with books. And some of them are falling off, and occasionally the fox-like creature stops every now and again to put some back on. And this fox-like creature has a pair of golden-rimmed spectacles. Kind of adjusts them every now and again, and kind of like, drops some scrolls, pills them back up. Uh, let's see uh, Well, where is that particular tome I'm looking for? Is it Oh, you must be the librarians! It kind of like outstretches its arms. These long, kind of gangly, lanky arms that stretch almost way too wide. And it gives, it gives this wry smile filled to the brim with gnarled, crooked, rotten teeth. Scrivenscry has need of your assistance, if you could please. The penguin shifts uneasily as the fox creature speaks. Well, well, chop, chop. Kind of claps its hands. Oh, uh, if we're if we're the librarians, we're we're new to this. We don't have the organizational system down here, but I guess we could kind of help you search. Excellent, excellent. Yes, I'm on the search for some very specific books. Uh, I'm looking for something called, uh, well, you don't need to, well, you don't need to know the particular name. I'm not sure if it would be written on the cover. But it has a particular book with uh, a long, lengthy list of names. Um, if you perhaps uh, could look about the library for just a book of names, if you don't mind, or if you by chance find any, any treatises, tomes, or scrolls about the outer planes, and please, if you could. What kind of names are you talking about here? Oh, ne just. Uh, Important names. Uh, you could say they're related to me in a strange way. Not directly, but close enough. They're almost like family. I mean, like, like a census. In a way, uh, yes. I was going to ask what the, the naming convention is. I mean, are we looking for a book that's got, like, you know, Jeff, Craig, or, like, you know, what, what kind of naming convention here are we dealing with? Oh, you know, just your standard, typical names. Ogthorthil, the Defiler, Auction Island, the Deceptor. It's very typical, box standard names. Nothing special, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had one of them in my family, too. You know, Tep really? Telepathically, after I cast this spell, uh, I'm going to tell them. We probably shouldn't give it to them if we find it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. No, we'll probably pocket it ourselves, or, you know. Burn it. Well, something no, like that. might help in somebody good who can put it to good, good use. Yeah, my, my cousin, Ogzafil, I think Jeff was his first name, but he went by the, the family name, you know. Ah, uh, uh, Jeff Ogzafil, yes, yes, of course. Very standard name, very lovely name. Very popular this time of year in the South. <laughs> The deep side. Can we roll anything to uh, determine this entity? <laughs> this entity? I'm just gonna roll an insight out of habit, sure. Roll. I already, I already don't trust him. 
Sure, to be fair, he is not giving the best impression right now, but you may roll insight or to determine his... Uh... Mostly I just want to flex my plus 10 insight. <laughs> That's also fair, a fair assessment. Uh, for if you want to know more about the creature itself, I'd say roll an arcana or religion check. Okay. Let's roll arcana. Oh, that oh, no. is that's unfortunate. Yes, yeah, so this is anyone who wants to. And Valin. Oh, Valin. Oh no. Oh, I actually have advantage on Arcana checks because of the Storm Rune. So I might as well. I was going to say, oh, Hawks was, might as well not even bother with this. But, you know, you there we go. Hmm. Did you ever get around to writing down which ones you have advantage on or which ones you have, like... No, but I did something better. I clustered all those runes together in the profile so I can flip <laughs> through them real quick. Really quick. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that, that does make it a bit easier. So, for you, Hawks, as this creature is speaking to you, the way that they're addressing you, and, the, and obviously the names that they spoke, there is a clear intonation that this creature is clearly of something of a fiendish nature. Something about them is just off, unsettling. And more so, the naming convention that was used is... A mix of fiendish languages of both infernal and abyssal in a strange way. You're not quite sure of the creature itself, but you think you might know what this is. It might be a creature known as a Yugoloth. Yugoloths are known as mercenaries of the lower planes of existence. Known for either gallaging, uh, gathering either knowledge or wealth is payment for mercenary activities. As much as you can gather. Meepo, on the other hand, you know exactly what this creature is. There is a brief insight that Eldeth gives you. This creature is known as an Arcanoloth. Arcanoloths are a relatively civilized breed of Yugoloth, possessing both keen mind and silver tongue. Business-minded, somewhat surly, but generally truthful, but th like other creatures of the lower planes of existence, are experts in manipulation and diplomacy. They're known for being a bit avaricious and conniving with their dealings, but like most Yugoloths, their greed manifests not as a thirst, uh, it manifests as a greed per se, but unlike other Yugoloths who thirst for wealth, theirs is a power to be found in knowledge and information. And the easiest way, easiest way to deal with them that you know of is to appeal to that desire. I definitely would share that information telepathically to the others so they would know. This includes the professor and villain. Of which villain kind of <laughs> stiffens up at that. Oh, mm. And then I'm like, calm down. So, yes, about uh, finding those books for me. I, could you be it? Could you be some lovely people and help out just a, a kindly old fox <laughs> well, let's split up and search good 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 chop chop scrib and scry assist them please <laughs> the penguin kind of squawks and just waddles in your direction carrying the very heavy and disorganized I... stack of books on the cart with it is it a construct no, it is a penguin that is collared and chained to this oh, cart. Okay. Uh, let's let's see over here. Fox is just going to grab a random book, and he's going to shout out the name of the author on the book and be like, is that a name you're looking for? No, 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 absolutely not. But, uh, good read, uh, what, is it, what does it say? And I will, hold on, let me, uh, let me roll something for you. Oh, fun. A two... All right, give me just a moment as I look through the tome. Just for the record, this is how Hawks is going to proceed, is, like, calling out random author names and random names from books and generally being an annoyance. Oh. So most most of the information here is 
not as useful as you'd like, but it appears to be a very boring and drab book describing the government and organization of Yithrin in general, politics. It is a slog. Um, but there is a particular oh, section that you notice um, that apparently Yithrin, though it was led by the Lich Lord Iriolarthus, it was governed by a group of eight arcanists who are his first apprentices, known as the Wizards of the Ebon Star. Their names and faces are apparently immortalized in the city's museum, not too far from here. There's eight apprentices and eight rituals. Then maybe that museum's going to be a good place to go to get that information. What was that? Oh, uh, I was wondering, did you know about the uh, the eight apprentices who were the, the ones who governed the city? Maybe you wanted their names. <laughs> It kind of blows like a long raspberry, raspberry out of his fox-like tongue, uh, fox-like snout. Uh, rubbish, absolute rubbish. Throw it away. Um, I found the book here. It's titled <laughs> "To Serve <laughs> Humans." <laughs> oh wait, no, yeah, that's that's an ogre cookbook. Uh, mm. Put it back. Put no, nope, put it on the cart. I might need that later. Uh, okay. Uh, no reason. Yeah. Do they got one for rat? You look is around. Alive? There, there is no book on rats, unfortunately. But if you, because you are scouring through scales. Oh, uh, oh I'm so sorry. What did you say, uh, Meepa? I'm sorry. I just thought uh, Skanuck said he had found a rat. <laughs> you find like a tiny little skeleton, a rat skeleton, Skanuck, I'll say. Crushed, unfortunately, was... by the bookshelf. Yeah, I was asking if they had a cook uh, cookbook on how to serve rat. I think Let me I know all that my, uh... that anyway. Yeah. You find no book upon rats, but instead you find the skeleton of a rat. Well, that's something. I just found a book here where someone used a quesadilla as a bookmark. I hate it when they do that so much. <laughs> oh, is it moldy? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's a little more than moldy at this point. It's completely disintegrated. Yeah, pass it over. Kind of like stretches out of hand. I'll like sweep the dust from like the imprint of the quesadilla onto his hand. <laughs> He'll just devour it. Mm. Excellent, yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, let's see. So you, you like, you prefer your quesadillas to be of a, a finer vintage than Absolutely. A little bit of to uh, torment of the immortal soul. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, um, handcrafted. Well, oh, it makes, a great, it makes a great topping when sour cream isn't available, so. Of course. Of I course. understand that. I'm glad you understand. Few people do. So you, uh, Scales, as you're looking through those books, I'm not too much of a uh, fascinating read, unfortunately, but you do know that the city's elite wore robes of silk, that displayed shifting, illustrious patterns. It seems to be just a book of the latest fashion trends of the year. I'm using locate object to find a book of fiendish names. All right, as you cast the spell, there is no such object in the library. It seems that this individual is mistaken, that there is no book of that nature in here. Upon reviewing my records, um, we don't actually have that book here. I think it was a different library. <clears throat> that is but unfortunate. We do have some other interesting pieces of literature which we can help you look for. Uh, fine. Let me review them, and he'll just kind of look over to the waddle over in your direction. Uh, hey, Hawks. Yes. You feel a, a tap on your left ankle. Oh, hello there, little guy. How are you doing today? Ah! The flipper palms you a piece of wood. He'll review the piece of wood. It says, help me. We still have the telepathic bond, right? You do. We sure do. Uh, hey, uh, guys... This uh, penguin just handed me something that says "Help me" written on it. So I'm, I'm starting to it. think. 
that uh, maybe we're going to have to do something about this uh, foxy guy. Meanwhile, as you're kind of hearing that message, meanwhile, Scriven's, this uh, individual is like, yes, please, so if you could uh, elaborate on uh, any alternative titles that you might have that might in uh, interest me, Treatise of the Outer Plains, uh, a thousand and one ways to dissect an individual, uh, you know, the list can go on. I, I am a sporting individual. Um, can I, like, peek o over his shoulder to see if there's any, like, really interesting titles along that sort of line that he might interest him specifically according to what he said absolutely roll an investigation check okay it's not, that's like my worst thing but okay we 19. Roll high. we Let did roll high here. here it is a good roll hmm you find a couple of books that might spark his interest there's a book on Military Conquests of the Ifrites of the fi Plain of Fire. There's a book on hunting of Leviathans and the Plains of Water. Uh, but other than that, there's not too much else that might spark his interest that you might think. I grab there's... those and, and offer them to him. Well, if you're interested in planar travel, here's a couple of uh, Roran reads, um, specifically the Ifrit one. Uh, a lot of Roran going on there. Um, I would pack something to keep you cool in the plane of fire, um, and maybe something to help you breathe if you're going to the plane of water. Um, its feet begins to tap on the ground, annoyedly. I suppose it will have to do. Are you planning on going to the plane of water? I plan on going many places. My search takes me far and wide, you see. Does, does your, uh... Do you have anything that you might want to trade with us to be able to um, perhaps function a little bit easier in the plane of water? Maybe we could do a trade. A trade, you say? Well, you, right. if you have something for me, what could I possibly give you? Well, I've noticed you have that, that penguin over there. I, I've always kind of ordered a friend penguin, a pet maybe, or maybe some lunch. Um, did... Do you think you might trade that for a uh, cloak of the manta ray? He'll begin to consider this offer. That is some great map of circumstance. I think that I might actually take you up on that offer. S mm, King King Sport. Clap tap. He'll clap his hands. The penguin will waddle over. Scriven Scry has no longer need of your services. Go to them. Serve them instead. Ah! Penguin will squawk. Very good. Now give me this item, please. Hand it over. Uh, who had the who had the cloak? Six scales did. I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to take your toy, but uh, we're not using it right now. I can always make it up to you later. Are you muted, uh, Skinner? I think Scales had it, um... Had what? The, the Cloak of the Manta Ray? Ray. Yeah, I, I offered it. it. Trade for the Penguin. Trade it for the Penguin. And he, ag he agreed to it already. <laughs> we could always take him out if you guys don't want to... Don't want to do that. That's up to you, though. I'm my character. I could so. probably make a cloak of the manta ray if we. Uh, okay. Just take it quick before I change my mind. You'll see the uh, <laughs> your cannon off begin to snap his fingers. Come on, chop chop! I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> um. Can I make an insight on him to see if he's trying to trick us with this deal? Sure, go ahead and roll insight. Because I feel like that was way easier than it should have been, and there's probably, like, some reason... Oh, great. Natural one, you have no clue. I also... Uh... Sure. 
You have been building bond, by the way. I do have a building bond. That's very useful. That doesn't help us. That'd be a 20. Okay, let me double check something real quick. Well, I don't like the guy either. I was just trying to come up with a, quote, peaceful solution to uh, mm. getting the guy. You can't get a good read on him. He just seems to be a very you know skeevy guy in general. It's everything about him seems skeevy. Like, you can't get a good read one way or another. If Flash of Genius included? With Flash of Genius? At the 25. With the 25? Okay. You get this sense. He might initially honor the deal, but there's nothing saying that he won't try and abscond with King the Penguin later. He is acting very shifty about it, and though he does seem to, might seem to honor the deal at first, you're not sure about what happens after. You do know oh, that you know uh, these creatures are known for being deceptive. Uh, you know what we forgot? We, you know, this is a kind of valuable object. Clearly some sort of a uh, semi magical penguin. This is valuable. This is pretty valuable. We should probably get this in writing, shouldn't we? Oh, but writing is so... takes forever. It just this contracts that's written up and... Le oh, it's just a nightmare. Come on, just trust me on this one. Who's in charge of writing contracts in our group? Was it you, Scales? In charge of writing contracts? I mean, you're the one that's the uh, salesperson. I mean, I was raised by Yetis. I <laughs> I could potentially do it, yeah. But... Oh, oh for... all right, if you don't want to, oh, good luck. You oh, can do it if you want. For the sake of everything, please just give me it, and I will be on my way. Wait, we have our contractor here with us. Who is definitely good at contracts, isn't that right? Ah, oh, that's right. Yes, villain will step forward. I am very good at contracts and writing <laughs> them up. She's you can see she's got a book with her at all times. She's very clearly a learned individual, skilled at contracts, among other things. All right, I. Hmm. She would be under the. I would include her with the. Uh, that's uh, right, you did. Telepathy. Hang on. If she wants to tell us something specifically that he doesn't, he shouldn't hear, then she can tell us. Okay. <sighs> if we must write up a contract, then I'll wait over here. And the, you see, it will sit upon this broken table and just hit, sit with its digitigrade digit uh, legs crossed on themselves and just start tapping the air with its leg. It's tail swishing back and forth. All right, can I get a group, group paddle, please? Just group paddle over here. Group paddle. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to. I'm kind of just going to loom over. We'll the group. huddle around you. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, uh, huddle around Hawks. It's, 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 it, yeah. Okay. I mean, at this point, you could all huddle on my back, and it wouldn't be a problem. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, how, how are we going to do this? I mean, is the, is the penguin really that important that we need to rescue them? I'm just throwing it out there right off the bat. I'm going to hand her the piece of wood that she can, so she can say it. Oh, it's intelligent. Like... Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That right. changes. And we it. have a little bit of a history with intelligent animals that uh, we the last one we were trying to help, it kind of turned out badly and it's a bad taste in our mouth. Very well. So how is how am I going to write this contract? I mean, are we going to write a loophole or something for it to... How is this going to work? Well, we want to be able to let the penguin be free in the end, and free to do what it wants without being captured by him again after we've freed it. Right, so you don't want him to suddenly renege on this deal and get the right, penguin back if, at a specific point in time. Because cause if we... If we take the penguin and then say okay the penguin's free he might just say well nobody owns the penguin anymore i'm gonna go take it we don't want that to be the case ah, point, point of order we want him we to give up rights to the penguin forever i i i, I recognize that sorry um for anyone in the back who is listening if you hear a, a snoring sound 
Uh, that is my dog. He is very loud. Uh, so <laughs> just bear with bear bear with us. My dog is very loud we when love he sleeps. Him and, we, and we always try to come up with a reason that this gnawing is happening today. It's the books are creaking in the bookshelves. Yeah, the bookshelves <laughs> are creaking. That's what it is. <laughs> but if you're wondering what that noise is, that's what that is. <laughs> Anyway. Many dark and terrible things snooze in the city of the ancients. <laughs> Either that or it's the skeleton or the fox demon. I think it's the skeleton. You, know you know what? No, it's I think I think it's the uh, it's it's the fox demon in this case. It's the uh, Arcana Loth. It's it's not even been five seconds and he's already. He's faking it. We all know it. Probably. All right. Okay, I have something in mind. I'll write, I'll write up something as quick as I can, and... I think I might have an idea as well. By all means, please. I am willing to listen. What what you what you think? Yeah, I see you're oh I see you're typing it out. Gotcha, gotcha. In that case I'll take a sip of water. I signature here, here about transfer the ownership and service of a penguin's name. The kobold name, scale signature, forfeiting all claim to the creature in perpetuity in exchange for a cloak of the manta ray. Okay? Straight. Excellent. Straightforward, simple. Good. Okay, I think this is I think this should work. Alright. We're going over. Wish me luck. Anyone, anyone else? Uh, I'm going to get any points on that. Check on it here. You're going to check on it. What are you going to check? In service. Transfer to scales, forfeiting all claim to creature in perpetuity in exchange for a cloak of the manta ray. Ad infinitum. Those are so loud. <laughs> so loud. In perpetuity, ad infinitum. <laughs> so yeah, infinitely enough. forever. <laughs> Just double, double. I'm down with that. Okay, so the neck is full in. We'll. With that addition in mind, if she's bringing it over, you quickly, you quickly scrabble over, scritch, 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 and she's like, ah, even better. And she'll present it to the Arcana Loth, who will you know, mockingly, ah, took you long enough. Let me, half let me see here. Hmm. Kind mm. of throw his brows. Fine. Scritch, scritch. He will kind of like prick his left arm. And a bit of blood will begin to seep out, this thick, oozing black ichor. And he will sign his name. And he will give it to you. And the signed Scriven Scry. So, I assume the rest of you sign your names as well. Um. I think we actually need your real name on this. Otherwise, it's not a binding contract, right? It is my alias, of which I am well known for. There will be no other substitute, and you will not convince me otherwise. All right. All right. If Are you, you sure Nick, because your name wasn't there, then I'm going to consider any contract with you under that name as, as void. I am unwilling to move. From that point. Fair enough. Yeah. Kind of sign in blood. I don't know if that has any bearing. It if if you wanted to make such stipulations, then you should have done so before I signed. And he'll get suddenly well, very vicious. The you so you get suddenly get very vicious with you. I'll accept it. I'm just well. You've signed it already. It's too late. You're right. Now. In blood, no less. Yes. Now, the cloak, if you don't mind. He'll, he'll, he'll reach out with that long, gangly arm. 
the claws unfurl like and almost seeming to extend in your direction scales. Give it to me. Please. If you wouldn't mind. Come on now. Don't He's be shy. The creature will slowly walk in your direction. He's, he's handing it to him. Pantomiming on the chat. Thank you. <laughs> I know, I'm just, I'm kind of drawing out a little bit. <laughs> right. He will take the cloak in his claws. Scales is holding onto it tightly as the... He, <laughs> he's trying to pull, like, eh. We'll get you another one, Scales. He, he, yeah. The, the, the Arcanaloth pulls slightly. Let go. Think of Akuma. Your mother has a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> he won't even. He takes a moment to take that in. Gets a tilts his head. Takes that kind of like rips the cloak from your grasp. And like kind of shh, flips it. Dusts it off. <clears throat> Very well, King Sports. Goodbye. Live a long and terrible life. Farewell. But sniffer. What was that? We're giving well, you these. Continue on. He's giving you that uh, that first one for free. You can use that against anyone who displeases you. Points a finger. <laughs> then vanishes. A puff of smoke. <laughs> and with that, as you all have got earned the freedom of one King Sport the Penguin. I am going to end the session here for tonight. Scales, take his chains off. Or not Scales, uh, Skanuck. Skanuck or Hawks. And off they come. Crying, I know. Sorry for making you sad. I'll get you another one. A better one. Cloak of the Flying Fish. It both flies and swims. I can help you. It'll, be it'll have like um, you know, oh, that's it'll have work. bear fur that looks like polar, that looks like yeti fur, but not actually yeti fur. Ooh, or mm, yeah, unless it's a yeti that you don't like. That's not true. Okay, so how am I getting rid of these uh, did, chains? Did we already end the stream? Not yet. No, I am currently. Before we end this, end completely for tonight, I'm, I was looking for the YouTube link, uh, so I could give that, because oh, in case, in, yes, in case you wanted to watch this adventure from the beginning, uh, we do actually have, I'm gonna put the I'll be right back uh, screen up just for now, just so I can, uh, yeah, how many, how many, um, episodes are there? There were a lot. Oh gosh, there is at least 35, I believe? And they're like three hour episodes each, so it's like... A hundred hours or more, more than a hundred hours of us being goofy kobolds together. Goofy kobolds, and the adventure starts out with the beloved premise of kobolds in a trench coat. So yes. let me go ahead and post the link uh, towards uh, my channel, uh, Danglin Panglin. If you go there and go search my playlist for kobolds in a trench coat, the playlist there's where you can watch the adventure uh, from the beginning. But until then. I hope you all have enjoyed watching, and wherever you are right now, I hope you have yourself a pleasant evening or day, depending on your time zone, and stay safe out there. I'll catch you next time, next Thursday, around, around, it, we kind of vary from like 8.40, 8.40 to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, at first start times, um, but until next time, catch you later. Bye-bye. That is on. Eldath, be well. Bye. 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 Bye.